Tailgate app to cater your next tailgate party and buy. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a sun-drenched Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Brian Denny Stadium, Alabama, and the Tennessee Volunteers as you're listening to the Everwood Countdown to Kickoff Everwood Treatment Company, the official treated lumber of Alabama athletics. Everwood is wood treated right, and there is always something special. Tyler, watch when it's Alabama and Tennessee on a college football third Saturday of October. And it's across all generations as well. And speaking with a local principal who had their homecoming and having a homecoming dance tonight, he just threw his hands up in the air going, what do we do? And it's the third Saturday in October. There can be no conflicts with this contest in this game here today in Tuscaloosa as Alabama and Tennessee square off. We've got a lot to talk about over the course of the next uh, few hours, but before we go any farther, uh, I would be remiss if I did not, on behalf of the entire network, offer our condolences to our sideline reporter, Christian Miller. You know, over the last number of weeks, you've probably heard me ask him on the air how his mom is doing. Well, regretfully, she, who was very much a part of our family, lost her life this week and Christian I know it's very difficult to to work but I had a similar situation when my mom passed away a couple of days before a broadcast and one of her last wishes were make sure you don't miss a broadcast because of me and we're thrilled to have you here today despite the fact that you're in mourning Absolutely, Eli, and I'm, I'm so grateful for my, my team with you guys and everybody a part of this Alabama football family that, that makes uh, today even possible for me. So first and foremost, I want to just say I'm so grateful uh, for my mother and everything that she's instilled in me, and, and I promise to, to continue you know, living through those virtues and those values throughout the rest of my life, and uh, I, I couldn't have asked for a better mother. Uh, she's the greatest person, the greatest woman that I've ever known, and I, I love her dearly, so I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, for your words, your support, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here with my family right now. Exactly. Nothing like being surrounded by family, uh, whether it's your blood family or your work family is here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult, uh, Tyler, to zero in and separate work from family. But, uh, yeah, Christian's mom was a very, very special lady, and uh, we're thrilled and honored to have been able to call her part of our family. Yes, sir. That's uh, can't imagine. That's that's got to be tough. But boy, uh, you, you've seen all the support and the love of uh, the impact, obviously, that Christian has had on all of us, and how many people are there to support him as best they can. So, with that said, we are going to take a break right here, with thoughts of Christian's mom in our minds, and when we come back, we'll zero in on Alabama and Tennessee. Kick off some 45 minutes away here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Mario fue pintor más de 30 años. Cuando me dijo que se le estaban olvidando las cosas, fue difícil. Un día me dijo, me dijeron que pintara el marco del lado por dentro y pinté el lado de afuera. Yo le di a la gente que le diga a su familia lo que está pasando con él. Si algo se nota diferente, podría ser Alzheimer. Es momento de hablarlo. Visita alz.org diagonal nuestras historias para saber más. Un mensaje de The Alzheimer's Association y The Ad Council. Wouldn't it be great if life came with a remote control? You know, you could hit pause when you needed to, or hit rewind, like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Oh, I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? 
When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The cheer of the crowd welcomes the Alabama Crimson Tide onto the gridiron as they exit the tunnel and begin their pregame warm-ups to our right. The Tennessee Volunteers in white and orange already out on the field to our left, and the remainder of their squad will be up coming here in a moment or so. I'm Eli Gold. Tyler Watts is alongside. You've heard from Christian Miller. Time now for our scouting report from Tyler. It's brought to you by Cook's Pest Control. Cook's Pest Control and Centricon, the unbeatable combination for termite protection. Let's start with the beginning of the week. It's Tennessee week. How does that differ, and how does the preparation differ, if at all, uh, between this week and any other game week? Well, it's not supposed to, but we all know that that's not reality either. Yeah. Last week versus Arkansas, you saw a shift in the focus and concentration late in that ball game as Alabama made a couple of mental mistakes, and all of a sudden they're fighting for life to get out of here with a, with a victory. But come Sunday, it's flip and turn, baby. You've got to remove that last game from your memory, and it's 100% focused on the Tennessee balls. A game you've had circle all season long that you didn't feel you played your best last year in Neyland Stadium. Now you have that opportunity for redemption. So you know that these guys were locked in, ready to go, eager to get into film study and preparation for the volunteers coming to town. We'll take a closer look at the volunteers and the Crimson Tide, but first let us pause 10 seconds right here for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. The fans filing in. It'll be a sold-out crowd of 100,077 here today as Bama gets set to meet the Tennessee Volunteers in a series that dates back for the 106th time. 106 to today's meeting. And, of course, Alabama, that includes nine straight wins here at home and uh, 15 victories in the last 16 meetings. Let's talk about Joe Milton the third, the quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, he and uh, Nico Iamaleakea is the uh, backup quarterback and uh, they, you know there are some people who say Nico might be the better of the two but we'll see Joe Milton today. But Joe Milton has the experience, obviously. He start, had a couple of starts up in Michigan and then transferred down to Tennessee when Josh Heupel got into town. And remember, he had that starting job for the first couple of weeks until he was beat out eventually after some poor performances. So he has bought his time over the last two seasons, anxious to get back out on the field. He's having a good year. All the tools in the toolbox, extremely physical, can throw the ball a country mile. Not always the most accurate guy, though, out on the field. Line play, that's where these games often are set. I've got to believe that Alabama's defense, if they play to their fullest, 
can win this ball game. Defense wins championships, and Alabama is right now showing great numbers. They've got, uh, you know, their 12th nationally in scoring defense, 18th in rushing defense. 15th in total yardage on defense. They've got a number of sacks, 26 of them, which is fourth best in America. Bama's got a number of defensive numbers that give you every right to feel encouraged going in. You do, but this is going to be by far the biggest challenge that this Alabama defensive front has faced all season long. This is a Tennessee front since Cooper Mays has got him back into the starting lineup, has really solidified their feelings of being able to dominate the line of scrimmage. They're averaging over 200 31 yards per game. It all starts with their ability to run and stay ahead of the chains. And the Alabama defensive front is going to have to have a big day for the Tide to be victorious. Who's the better runner here? Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, Dylan Sampson. They've all had in excess of 45 carries already this year. Uh, who do they lean on? I know that Christian really spelled out the strengths of Jalen Wright. He is so explosive and fast and physical in the line of scrimmage, and he can get you the tough yardage as well. But because of their schemes, he also has some favorable looks that give him numbers in the box that he can take advantage of to where he's getting up to the safety before first contact. But he's a physical guy who can really churn out the yardage even after contact. And Christian Miller, that is one of the situations that Bama's defense will have to figure out today. They are a multifaceted offense, the Volunteers are. They are, Eli. They're an offense that loves to go quick tempo. They're one of the fastest teams in the country, so it's imperative that our defense is getting back to the football and getting those calls and getting lined up as quick as possible. They like to run the football, so we got to be stout up front. If we can stop their run, we'll make them one-dimensional where they've struggled in the passing game. So I think that's going to be the key for this Alabama defense today. One of the other big changes is going to be that Alabama is at the nose. Tim Keenan the third is going to be facing Ollie Lane today as the expected starter instead of Andre Carrick and that could could be a factor now Carrick is not bad he's from the University of Texas and he's he transfers over but uh, I like Tim Keenan the third the way he's been playing I like Tim Keenan the third regardless of who he's playing against as well he was our highlight last week and did yep. not disappoint he has had a great October as far as his performance out and controlling the line of scrimmage and forcing everything to the edge. Christian, your thoughts on that? He's been phenomenal, and that's where everything starts up from. We talk about it. It probably sounds like a broken record, but it really does. And when you have guys like Tim Keenan that are so stout and physical at the line of scrimmage, but they also can move. I mean, we're talking about a guy that led the team in tackles a couple weeks ago, right? He's a defensive tackle. That is unheard of. So we've got big guys that are strong, physical, but they, they can also move around well. When you have guys like that, they're, they're hard to beat. And so we're going to need their best today going against a good offensive line uh, in Tennessee. Definitely. Shown. Now let's talk about another gentleman whose name we have not mentioned yet today, and that is Deontay Lawson, and he is going to be our player of the game to watch. You know, for every Crimson Tide touchdown scored this season, Tito's Handmade Vodka will donate seven tickets to Vet Ticks for active service members and veterans who will get seats to upcoming Bama home games. So a big thank you and a big roll tide to Tito's. And they say, let's take a look and zero in on our star to watch, Deontay Lawson. And it's real simple as the reason why. This front for Tennessee does such a good job of getting a helmet on a helmet and opening up some running lanes. And because they're going to spread you out, you may not have but one linebacker in the box. Or even if you do have two, they're probably going to find a way to get a guard up on that second level. So the ability to be able to roam around bounce from, from hole to hole and be able to clog those up as Jalen Wright makes his choice of where he's going to attack is going to be key. And then making those tackles in the, in the lanes for short gains. Jalen Wright, by the way, number four rusher in the Southeastern Conference. He comes in with 80 carries, 571 yards, but interestingly, only one touchdown getting his work in between the 20s, so to speak. Yeah. But, you know, he, I, I think as this season has progressed, he's the guy that they're going to lean on more and more. They have used Jabari Small. He's got a couple of TDs, but the guy on the ground who's really been doing the job well 
in addition to quarterback Joe Milton is Dylan Sampson. He's got six rushing touchdowns. And it's always nice to have multiple running backs that you can filter in throughout the course of the game. It keeps them fresh. Alabama has had that luxury for years and years under Coach Nick Saban, and now Tennessee is, is starting to field those benefits as well. Our Cook's Pest Control sideline reporter, former Bama player, NFL standout Christian Miller. Of course, every time we hear from Christian, he'll be sponsored by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon, the unbeatable combination in termite protection. Christian, is there a tangible difference in the feel on the sidelines prior to a big game like this? There always is, Eli. Look, this is a rivalry game, first off. But second off, this is a redemption game. We know how things went last season. Yeah. We don't have to talk about it. But we're back home in Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. These guys, in my opinion, they look like they're ready to roll as they should. I mean, they have all the motivation they need. They should remember that feeling of getting stormed on the field at the end of the game. Here in the press conferences where Tennessee's head coach and their players were on top of the world last year. Well, now it's time to let them understand, hey, you're in our house. Now is our time this season. That's a good point, and uh, you can identify with that, Tyler. I love it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This, this is one where you really want to try to set the tone early on and be the most dominant physical team out there, and that's a tall task today versus the Tennessee Volunteers. However, we know that it's within Alabama's DNA. It's what they want to be, and it's what they strive for every week. The warm-ups continuing below us as Tennessee warms up in the shadows of the goalpost to our left. And Alabama doing the same to our right. The Volunteers still with those light orange numbers on their jerseys. Makes it a little more difficult to pinpoint who's who. And that's something that Johnny Majors started years ago. The head coach at the Volunteers who used to send out black and white game films to the opposition. And he realized that the lighter the orange, the tougher to see the numbers on a black and white scouting film. And that tradition is carried on. They remember there for a while, they used to outline in black. Yeah. It made it a lot easier for us as broadcasters to be able to tell who was out there. But every coach is always looking for whatever angle they can get. Let's check the starting lineups now. Presented to you today by Walk-On Sports Bistro. Walk-On's puts everything they've got into bringing you game day with a taste of Louisiana. Visit a location in Mobile, Montgomery, Hoover, or Tuscaloosa for your next game day experience. Walk-On's is more than a restaurant. Let's check out the Tennessee Volunteers offense. The line of John Campbell Jr., Ollie Lane, Cooper Mays, Javante Spragans, and Jeremiah Crawford. That's their offensive starting lineup. And something that was really a liability in years past is now a strength of this offensive unit. These five guys up front really set the tone for Tennessee. The wide receivers, there are many, but they'll use Ramel Keaton, Squirrel White. He's from Clay Chalkville High School and Caleb Webb, among others. And if you are keeping tabs at home, you might want to jot down number three, D. Williams, who is a defensive back by trade, but is going to be lining up as an offensive wide receiver at times here today for Tennessee. You know, he is, he's involved in the return game as well, the kick return game for Tennessee. So uh, someone who is very comfortable having the ball in his hands. Jacob Warren is their tight end. He has caught eight passes. McCallum Castles has caught nine passes. So uh, they like using their tight end. And something you wouldn't really think Josh Heupel uses a lot of tight end in his high-octane, explosive, stretchy, deep down the field type of offense. But it's one a position that they're really utilizing this, this season with success. And then, of course, the running backs. We've talked about Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, Dylan Sampson. They are the primary three running backs. They have five that they use, but those three are the ones that will be carrying the leather today. All talented running backs, but hopefully like Coach Majors, it, it won't matter who is out there. Hopefully this Alabama front will, will eliminate all threats of a running attack for Tennessee. The Alabama defense that will be facing uh, that offensive unit 
Uh, well, we don't know exactly yet. Malachi Moore is still a so-called game day decision, game time decision. I've been watching him out there. He is now trotting and looking good at the 30-yard line. He's been taking all of his rotations in the pregame. So, uh, you know, using that as an indicator, he might well be set to play. But I was ready to eat crow last week when I said there's no way he would play or didn't anticipate and He was out there warming up and looked pretty doggone good to us as well. Yeah. So another week of rehab under his belt, you can only anticipate and estimate and expect him to be out there on the field to be an impact like he was his freshman year up in Neyland Stadium where he got a return touchdown there that freshman year. Exactly. The Bama defensive front, it's gotten better and better week by week. Justin Aboigby, Tim Keenan the third, and Tim Smith, and of course there are others, Jamarian Latham and Jaheim Otis, uh, that group right there. But those first three, Aboigby, Keenan, and Smith, uh, they're going to win for you uh, regardless what color your uniform is. Yeah, and they got to play well on first and second down to put Tennessee in an obvious throw-in situation or at least back in the chains. What you don't want to get this defense or this offensive unit is to allow them to catch that tempo which which prevents you from coming off the field and substituting the uh, linebackers led of course by dallas turner on one side chris braswell on the other great pass rushers hopefully we can get them in obvious throw in situations where those guys can really tee off this offensive line has only allowed nine sacks all season long for tennessee but we're averaging three to four per game so it's a battle here of who's going to give it give in the uh, secondary for Bama, Terry and Arnold, he had another four sacks last week. He has 36 on the year. Caleb Downs, the freshman from Georgia, now with 54 tackles. Jalen Key, Kool-Aid McKinstry, and again, we mentioned Malachi Moore and his uh, game-time decision. Yeah, and, and obviously uh, communication is going to be so key here in the secondary. Tennessee really picked on our safeties in last season's loss. They found some matchups that were favorable, favorable to them, but I think that we're playing better, much better on the back end than we were a year ago. I think so. For Alabama, the offense, Jermaine Burton, Malik Benson, Isaiah Bond, among others, at wide receiver. I would love to see five or more explosive plays out of this unit today. I think they're going to have some looks that are favorable where they're going to get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and they have to be able to go up and challenge and win those 50-50 balls. The line is going to have to protect, and that's going to be one of the keys to this ball game. Caden Proctor at left tackle, Tyler Booker, Seth McLaughlin, Jaden Roberts or Darian Dalcourt at the right guard, J.C. Latham. They're going to have to handle Harrison, Thomas, Lott, and Barron, the defensive front for Tennessee. Obviously a big challenge for them, and hopefully the preparation against Texas in that, that big off, uh, defensive front has prepared us well. But Caden Proctor has to have a good game today. He's got to be quick off the ball, have good hand placement, and not give any, up any pressures on that left side. Proctor, the freshman from Des Moines, Iowa. Jalen Milrow, I'll tell you, when I was uh, walking in and visiting with uh, Bob Kessling, the voice of the Tennessee Vols, he said, is Milrow really that good of a thrower? And I said, well, on a long one, he's deadly. That's for darn sure. Uh, you know, everybody has taken note of what we have seen developing over the course of the offseason and now early this season. The thing about it all is, is he possesses the ability to, which is the, the first thing you have to ask yourself when you're when you're gauging a performance. Are they capable of doing what you're, and he is. He has to focus on his mechanics, though, and make sure that his feet are in the right place. He's driving the ball in those intermediate passes, because if, if he is deadly and if he is accurate on the 5 to 15 yard pass, Alabama is going to have a great day offensively. The running backs, Jace McClellan, Roy Dell Williams, obviously they are both starters in most everybody's book. We have seen Jam Miller, Justin Haynes, uh, Justice Haynes, excuse me, and on some occasions, five times, Richard Young. But let's zero in on the top uh, three, if not four. 
It's a good, solid group of runners, and they've got strong legs. They hate getting tackled. And we continue to talk about how diverse they can be as far as carrying the ball in between the tackles or getting out in space as receivers. We've seen Roydell Williams and Jace McClellan have great success out on the perimeter as receivers. you got to continue to do that. You have to put a lot of pressure on this Tennessee defense and make them feel uncomfortable with looks and where you're aligning to put them in uncomfortable situations. Amari Nyblack, the leader of the group, Group at tight end. Again, C.J. Dupree has been banged up just a bit. The transfer from Maryland, Robbie Oots, has been out there a lot when there have been two, if not three, tight ends. Danny Lewis, Jr., also playing a good bit. So there is a selection there, but uh, Dupree obviously coming off an injury. And we definitely need him to be able to help us out because he is so pivotal in our running attack. He's a great run blocker. He does a good job of mixing things up. We've also seen him go down the middle and call in some big catches as well. But Amari Noblek is a guy that could be a difference maker in today's contest as well. Going against some safeties, even some linebackers, he's going to have some winnable opportunities he needs to take advantage of. We talked about the defensive front for the uh, Tennessee Volunteers. The linebacking crew, Elijah Herring, from middle of middle linebacker from Newnham, Georgia, and Aaron Beasley from Franklin, Georgia. Those two guys have really uh, played well. They had uh, 14 tackles in Beasley's case uh, the other day, and uh, he had a couple of 14 tackle games last year. The guy's good. Yeah, and a lot like Texas A&M's linebackers, they're good in space and they don't miss open field tackles, and that's, yeah. that's, that's pivotal for a solid linebacking core. They'll have five potential starters out of the secondary. Four, obviously, will get the start pending the, uh, the lineup. Uh, Kamal Haddon, Jalen McCullough, Tamarian McDonald, Wesley Walker, and Danico Slaughter. Those guys are also fairly stubborn as far as giving up big plays. It's just amazing how this entire defensive unit, though, has improved year over year with Josh, with Josh Heupel at the helm there in Tennessee. This used to be a game where you could just surf it. We're going to have explosive play. We're going to control the line of scrimmage. But over the last couple of years, things have started tightening up as they've gotten better players in, and they're performing well this season. And, you know, Josh Heupel, the guy played collegiately at Weber State. He played at Snow College. And then, yes, finally at the University of Oklahoma. But that's not the normal progression that you see for Division One college head coaches. No, but it's a guy that had to work for everything that he's ever gotten, and that is something to say. He is not, he is not scared of a challenge or to put his guys in those situations to find out who can hold their own. That's the starting lineup for today's game being brought to you by Walk-On's Sports Bistro. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, and uh, we await the uh, temperature climbing even more. It is right now up to 81 degrees. 81 degrees, wind out of the west-southwest at 7 miles an hour, and the humidity is just 32%, which makes it for a very, very comfortable day here in Tuscaloosa. A few high clouds overhead, but nothing of any significance and no concern about weather today, so it's going to be a nice, nice day for this third Saturday of October. This game day weather and field conditions presented by Alpha. Protect your cars, home, life, and business with Alpha. Get a quote or find a local agent at alphainsurance.com. Proud supporters of the Alabama Crimson Tide. We are closing in on 15 minutes prior to kickoff. It's presented by Beatbox. Each Beatbox is bursting with delicious flavors. It's gluten-free, low sugar, and resealable. So look for it in stores across the southeast for your next tailgate today. Beatbox, a big sponsor of the Alabama Crimson Tide. We're going to break away and take care of some business. When we come back, we'll be getting set for kickoff. It's Alabama and the Tennessee Volunteers next on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. 
This has been the Everwood Countdown to Kickoff Show. Everwood, the official treated lumber of Alabama athletics. Alabama football is also brought to you by Guthrie's, the original chicken finger restaurant, and now an official partner of the Crimson Tide. Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. And by Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Here we go. Kickoff is coming up next on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Hey there, Bob Baumhauer here. Score big deals at Baumhauer's this football season in order from our inflation bites menu. Try our Buffalo Wings special with fries and a complimentary beverage for only $9.99. And what's football without a cold beer? Our pitchers of Yingling and Yingling Flight are only $7.99, served all day, seven days a week. And huddle up, football fans. Sign up today for our free NFL Pick'em contest at Baumhauer's.com for weekly prizes. Baumhauer's, legendary fun and legendary food. Producing championship quality lumber is not an easy process, but at Everwood Preserving, it's our only process. Wood treated right. Everwood offers top-notch pressure-treated wood for decks, outdoor structures, commercial jobs, and more that you can build your reputation on. When it comes to quality, we're on the winning team. Visit your local Everwood dealer today and discover the difference for yourself. Everwood Preserving Incorporated, the official lumber of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Saturdays are made for football, and when the game is on, we're finally off. Off duty, offline, out of office. At Correct Coors Light is our do not disturb message to the world. On game day, we don't think about the 9 to 5, but worry about the 4th and 1. So this Saturday, grab a Coors Light, press play on some pigskin, and pause on everything else. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshments, made to chill. Proud partner of Crimson Tide Sports Network. 2021 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. We've all been caught up in the little chores that pile up every day. The dishes in the sink, the trash that needs taking out, the pesky check engine light. Isn't it time to make a change and escape to a whole new world of possibilities? Where there's dinner without dishes, nights filled with adventure, and every day you feel like a winner. A little change can go a long way when you escape every day at Wing Creek Casino and on the Casinoverse app. Domino's delivers game days across Tuscaloosa and the surrounding area. Locally owned and operated in Tuscaloosa for over 30 years, the team at Domino's is proud to be a supporter of Alabama football and athletics across the capstone. Domino's would like to thank our customers for supporting our local business for over 30 years. Make Domino's your choice on game days year-round and enter our weekly drive for dough contest this football season. Domino's is proud to deliver your Alabama Crimson Tide game days anytime. Visit RollDominoes.com. Thanks from Domino's and Roll Tide. At Red Diamond, we know that there's simply nothing better than the perfect sip of fresh brewed iced tea. And we've been working hard to make sure choosing Red Diamond is always easy. With only simple ingredients, water, tea leaves, and pure cane sugar. Or no sugar. We make sure our tea tastes like, well, tea. Stop by your local cooler and pick up a gallon for a perfect sip today. Red Diamond. Perfect, not easy. There is something inherently special about the third Saturday in October. And in this expanded conference playoff world in which we now live, it would be best to not take this wonderful and historic game for granted, as SEC schedules have only been announced through next season. The Alabama-Tennessee history is rich replete with checkerboard end zones in the shadow of the Smoky Mountains. Coaches Goose Tree and Donahue dancing in the locker room with victory cigars. And let's not forget 15 in a row or even a miracle or two. So many people, the Tide and the Volunteers is as much a part of the month of October as is trick-or-treat and pumpkin-spiced lattes. 
Here's hoping the schedule maker sees fit to keep this one on the annual pigskin calendar. But for now, let's sit back and enjoy once again one of college football's greatest rivalries, Bama and Tennessee from Bryant Denny Stadium. Next. Here we go. It's time for Alabama Crimson Tide football on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Here we go. Crimson Tide football is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. And by Golden Flake, the official potato chip of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Let's go! Now turn it up. It's game time. The largest student-to-body organization at the University of Alabama. The Million Dollar Band, 400 members strong, right now on the field, spelling out Bama to the delight of the 100,000-plus on hand as we get set for the third Saturday of October and the Alabama Crimson Tide annual meeting with the Tennessee Volunteers. I'm Eli Gold, alongside Tyler Watts, Christian Miller is our Cook's Pest Control sideline reporter. Roger Hoover serves as the host of our broadcast. Our engineer producer is Tom Stipe. Our spotter, Butch Owens. Ethan Carabin handling things on the in booth camera, the Royal Furniture booth cam. And Chris Stewart, with whom you heard the conversation with Coach Nick Saban a short while ago. We close in on kickoff for the Tide and the Volunteers, a series that Alabama has dominated over the years. This is the 106th time the teams are meeting today. Bama has won 59 times, 38 victories for Tennessee. There have been eight uh, draws, and that includes nine straight wins here at home for the Alabama Crimson Tide. When you're in the locker room here, uh, Tyler, can you hear the fans? Can you hear the band? Does that seep through the the concrete into the locker room? You can hear everything that is going out. And if you don't think that that gives you chills as you're sitting there mentally trying to prepare yourself for this contest, you're wrong. You can hear all the enthusiasm that is building up outside, and you cannot wait to go through those doors. Right now, walking out from the far sideline is the color guard for today's game. Today's game salute to service is John Nightstep. The salute to service honoree is presented by Royal Furniture, and that's something that we do here in Tuscaloosa for every home game. Somebody from the military is always honored here at the pregame ceremony, Colonel John Nightstep. Also overhead, circling and ready to make their presence known, the A-10s from Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. They're They'll be doing the flyby here prior to the start of this ball game as Alabama and Tennessee are now inside of 10 minutes away from kickoff. But the fans listening in now to the uh, special presentation to John Nightstep as the Million Dollar Band gets set to play our national anthem. A nice round of applause for the Colonel. Our Royal Furniture Game Salute to Service. Now, let's go down to the field. And the Million Dollar Band with the playing of our National Anthem. And supporter, Dr. K. Hines. Please remove your hats and join in singing as the Million Dollar Band proudly presents our National Anthem.
giant screens, those A-10s from Moody Air Force Base in Georgia. Buzzing overhead, Bryant-Denny Stadium. You also heard moments ago the voice of the Million Dollar Band, Dr. Robert Levin, introducing, as he has for years and years, the Million Dollar Band. Robert has been the voice of the band, well, for more years than he or I or anybody else would like to mention. He is uh, still doing a great, great job. The captains were going to be making their way out to the sidelines here in just moments or so. And our Bama captain today, our kickoff captain, is Parker Williams of Hoover. He'll be joining us today, courtesy of Barkley GMC and Make-A-Wish Foundation of Alabama. We welcome Parker Williams to Bryant-Denny Stadium for today's game. And, of course, the toss of the coin will be handled by the officials, led by our referee, Ken Williamson, today. The rest of the officiating crew from the Southeastern Conference, Russ Pulley is the umpire. Stephen Ray is the headline judge. The line judge is Mickey Bryson. The field judge today, Barry Blackwell. Brandon Spencer is the side judge. Keith Parham is the back judge. Joel Moenkoff is the center judge. And the replay official is Jordan Craddock. Nobody plays it better than the Million Dollar Band. Every seat is filled here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. A lot of orange, Tyler Watts, sprinkled around. Uh, obviously, Tennessee had their allotment, and it looks like their fans have managed to find a few other tickets. And for the first time in 15 years, they actually fulfilled their allotment. There wasn't a whole yeah. lot for them to come down and cheer for recently outside the last two or three years. Last year, of course, Alabama losing at the very finish in Neyland Stadium, Knoxville. So they're trying to build on that as they get set for today's game. Today's toss of the coin is going to be delivered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. You know, most every pre-owned vehicle at Tuscaloosa Toyota comes with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Shop 24-7 at TuscaloosaToyota.com. We'll be heading down to midfield with the officials and the captains. And, of course, our own Christian Miller will be down there. Christian, put yourself in the shoes of one of the linebackers today. What do you look for? What's the key for this ball game for Alabama? Well, we're going to have to first stop the run because that's what these guys like to do. And we used to call it, you have to earn the right to rush. Rush on third down when you earn that by stopping the run. But make sure you're ready to fly around sideline to sideline. They'll work the perimeter with their stream game, but they really want to establish the run, and we can't let them do that. So we've got to be stout up front. We've got to be physical. We've got to tackle in space. But ultimately, we've got to impose our will on these guys for 60 minutes in this game. And it's not easy. No. No, that focus and concentration, it left us last week. And just like what Christian said, impose your will for a full 60 minutes. Play in, play out, regardless of what the previous play was. Be ready to get up there and bust them in the mouth again. The captains now making their way from their respective locker rooms. Alabama's captains going to the far sideline, the Alabama sideline. And to the near sideline come the Tennessee Volunteers. The Vols here on the road wearing their white jerseys and white pants. They have twin orange stripes down the outside of the pant legs. The helmets are bright white as the Crimson Tide makes its way out onto the playing field right now. And the Tennessee helmets, we were talking about bright white. They have an orange stripe down the middle and that stylized Tennessee capital T on the side of the headgear. Alabama, of course, at home in the crimson jerseys over the white pants. They've got crimson stripes down the outside of the pant leg. 
The letters and numerals are in white. The headgear is crimson with a white stripe down the middle. And the player uniform numbers on the sides of the headgear. Here come the captains to midfield. And our referee, Ken Williamson, getting set to handle the toss of the coin. Let's go down, listen in with our microphone. Let's pull you, though. I'm umpire today. Make sure the vision is going to see. We're going to call the toss. This is head. This is tails, okay? What are you going to call? What is it? It's a head. It's a head. Man, you can barely hear the referee. He could barely hear the captains. They're all standing, huddled up atop the logo at midfield. I can't imagine what it's like when you have no communication and you're standing shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> you better get accustomed to it because that's what it's going to be like here for the next three hours. You're going to have to learn how to do nonverbal communication because this place is rocking. So that's going to wrap up the Everwood countdown to kickoff. Everwood would treat it right. And we are set to go. Don't forget, we'll have scoreboard updates throughout the course of the day. Uh, the day. Coming up, we've got all sorts of news and info that you'll want to have. It's all coming your way here in Tuscaloosa. There's nothing like this atmosphere. It's the best, isn't it? It really I mean, is. This There's... is as good as it gets. And as a player, you only have 12 opportunities, but cert certain ones are just special. And this is definitely fits that category. Alabama along the far sideline. Their players huddling out on the field at the 35 right now. Tennessee coming off their sideline, the near side. And they'll huddle up and then break quickly, sending their D. Williams deep to field the opening kick with Cameron Selden joining him as the up back. And Alabama, of course, with Will Reichert getting set to kick it away. 44 points away is Will Reichert from the number one all-time kicking and scoring record in the NCAA. He picked up six more points last week, so we look forward to seeing that total continue to grow. The wind again is out of the west-southwest at seven. The tassels on the uprights to our right are dancing around pretty good, but the ones to our left are hanging limply by the uprights. And the kick now sails into the end zone and out of the end zone, and that means Tennessee will uh, touch back, starts from their own 25-yard line, and our first look at Joel Milton. And this is a guy that you really have to put him behind the chains and keep him in the pocket because we often talk about his strong arm, but he is also a really good runner. Everybody is a good runner. Remember, Coach Saban on Thursday night asked for noise from the fans. And Lord, everybody is responding to that request. A full house backfield behind the line of scrimmage. Milton looks left. Quick release to Jalen Wright circling on the screen out of the backfield. And he'll pick up yardage out to about the 26-yard line. So a yard gain on the play as Bama closed in a, hundred, in a hurry. Here now, second down and nine. They average better than two plays a minute. And here's a quick throw to the left side. Again, the catch is made. Squirrel White there to make the uh, grab. That's right, Squirrel. That's his nickname. His real name is Marquarius. He's from Birmingham. Here now is a third down and six. Off the far hash mark, Milton drops back. 
chased from the pocket. He's got running room to the 30, and he comes up to meet Malachi Moore, but Malachi gets the worst of that exchange and is hit and stumbles backwards. So the first down for Joe Milton, who, of course, at 6'5", 235, is a load to try and stop in the open field one-on-one. -on -one. Now the snap. Milton stands in. He looks, throws to the right side. Catch is made, and uh, that is going to be Squirrel White, who again comes to the near sideline to make the grab. And this is a frenetic pace. Yeah, they all love to get back up to the line of scrimmage and really force your communication in the secondary to be sound. Here the double clap of the hands. The snap. Handoff goes to the number zero, Jalen Wright. And Wright goes to the far side and gets out with Caleb Downs chasing him out near midfield. It'll be a third down and about a yard upcoming for Tennessee. Caleb Downs was ready to make that tackle at the line of scrimmage that showed the speed that these backs have for Tennessee as he's able to get to the edge. Here now the snap and the inside give. And that's going to be a first down for Tennessee again. That's what they do. They just run. That time, Jalen Wright got the handoff again. And there's a man down for the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's going to be Tim Keenan. Oh, Lord. Tim Keenan the third. The heart and soul, say some, of that defensive front. The nose tackle not getting up after that tackle right there. At, he is literally on the 50-yard line on the uh, logo, the crimson and white Alabama Crimson Tide logo. So we are going to break away while the doctors and trainers tend to Tim Keenan the third. No score early. Two minutes in, Bama and Tennessee on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Picture yourself here. This mental getaway brought to you by VisitPensacola.com. Every Alabama tailgate has food. But when you bring Hellman's to your tailgate, the buffalo chicken dip makes the Crimson Tide drool. That pimento cheese dip isn't just tasty, it's legendary. And the burgers? Those are the tailgate MVPs. With a squeeze of creamy, delicious Hellman's, every bite is a taste touchdown. Hellman's, official mayonnaise of Alabama athletics. Hey, Bama fans, since college football is officially back, Dos Equis wants you to experience this season with a real one. So head to DosEquisSweeps.com and enter for a chance to win game tickets, hospitality passes, and pregame sideline passes for two to the Alabama football game versus LSU on November 4th. Raise one with a real one. Dos Equis, served where the tide rolls and proud partner of the Crimson Tide Radio Network. 21 plus, enjoy Dos Equis responsibly, imported by Cervezas Mexicanas, White Plains, New York, copyright 2023. Picture yourself here. White sugar sand beach, clear blue-green water. This is Pensacola. It's the way to beach. Experience what's waiting at visitpensacola.com. No score between Alabama and Tennessee with 13-10 left to go in the first quarter. We just had an injury timeout brought to you by Andrew Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center, the official sports medicine provider for the Crimson Tide football team. It was good to see Tim Keenan get up under his own power and jog back to the Crimson Tide sideline. Now in the injury tent as we continue inside the Alabama Credit Union broadcast booth. Feel good about your money. Roger, thank you. Jaheim Otis is in taking the spot of Tim Keenan the third. And now we've got a first and ten Tennessee from midfield. Fakes the inside give and a throw into the curl on the left side. Squirrel White picks that one up. Yeah, easy pitch and catch there on first down. The play action sucks up the linebackers and there's an easy throwing lane on the slant. Single setback to the left side of the quarterback. Play action fake. He'll look left. He throws long. He's got coverage, but there's a man open. Touchdown. Squirrel White was open by not much, but the quarterback, Joe Milton, laid it in, and it goes for a lengthy 
Touchdown for the Tennessee Vols, 39 yards on the play. Touchdown, Tennessee. So much of their passing game depends on getting mismatches. There you have a wide receiver versus Chris Braswell in, in a linebacker. It wasn't poor coverage. The ball was just thrown perfectly. Jackson Ross is the kicker. Or excuse me, Charles Campbell is the kicker. Yeah, they're taking a long look and at this. And they are going to review this one. I don't know that he had possession before. He went the field with a catch for a touchdown. Previous play is on review. It hit his hands while his foot was dragging across, but I think it may have been come loose. And then when he re-controlled it, I think he might have been out of bounds. We're looking at the video replay here, as many of you are at home, I'm sure. If you need a uh, near a TV screen, and we'll just have to wait and see what the officials say. They've got the replay crew here, plus everybody else in Birmingham and the war room. White reaches out. I'm not so sure that he had the ball. Yeah, I think he was juggling it just a little bit as he kind of tried to get his hands around it for a little bit firmer because it was starting to slide through. He adjusted. Boy, I don't know. But That's tough. I don't know. You know me. I got my glasses, my crimson colored glasses on. So he did drag his toe at the half yard line. After further review, the rolling on field stands. Touchdown. Yep, he dragged his toe at the half-yard line. So a 39-yard touchdown. Milton to Squirrel Wright. White out of Birmingham's Clay Chalkville High School. Now the extra point try. Campbell to try it. And that one is up and good. The Bromberg scoring drive will be eight plays, 75 yards in two minutes and 21 seconds. Eight plays, 75 yards in 221. And Tennessee has taken the early 7 to nothing lead here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. On game day, success starts with a great game plan. No matter if you're at home or on the road, greatness starts here with the Ford F-150 truck. Delivering a rare combination of power and smart technology like the available class-exclusive Pro Power Onboard, Ford F-150 helps make great things possible. Visit your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Series manual for important operating instructions. Classes full size pickups under 8,500 pounds. GBWR. Crimson Tide football is brought to you by Aetna. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. My simple solution to the problem was remove people from the scene and help them feel safer. In response to attacks against Asian Americans, Maddie Park raised over $250,000 to donate cab rides to the Asian community. There is so much more work to be done. We really need to come together and tackle this issue as a community. Support the Asian community. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. 
Tennessee 7, Alabama nothing with 12.39 left to go in the first quarter of the third Saturday in October. It's presented by Coca-Cola. Thank you to Coca-Cola for your support of Alabama athletics. Be sure to grab game day winning taste with Coke Zero Sugar. Taste you can't beat. Let's head down to the sidelines with our Coast Pest Control sideline reporter Christian Miller. Christian, what did you see in terms of Alabama's protection there, especially in the secondary on that touchdown play? Well, Roger, we talk about Tennessee always looking for these matchups, and they got what they wanted. They had Chris Braswell, an outside linebacker, a guy who's 250 pounds, lined up on a slot receiver who ran a wheel route. That linebacker has to buy him, and Chris Braswell did a nice job in coverage, but just a better throw and catch by Tennessee right there. All right, Christian, thank you. The kickoff by Josh Turbeville is sailing into the end zone for a touchback. Nothing Kendrick Law could do with that one, so the Crimson Tide now will go to work first and 10 from their own 25-yard line, and we'll see if Alabama's offensive line can give Jace McClellan and Jalen Milrow some good room with which to work here in the early going. First and 10, Bama from their own 25. 12.39, time remaining in the opening quarter of play. Here now, Milrow rolls right, looks, looks, throws, finds Jace McClellan, and out of bounds after a six-yard pickup to the 31-yard line as he goes to the right sideline. You're trying to catch an overly aggressive defensive unit in Tennessee who's amped up right now, so good call there on first down, going with the play action. You have multiple options. Jalen Milrow also had the option to run the football. C.J. Dupree is out there at tight end. He and Robbie Oots. So that's good news as Dupree is healthy enough to play. Here now Milrow fakes the inside give and dances up the middle to the 32-yard line, maybe the 33. So it'll bring up a third down and a couple for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, staying on schedule is so important. And we missed a block in the interior that took away the run threat between the tackles. So the ball had to be pulled. Chase McClellan is in. Malik Benson in the lineup now as Robbie Oots takes a seat. Two wide outs to the near side. Benson goes in motion the other way. The inside give. Bama's not going to get there. They're not going to get there on a third and three. They picked up two yards on the play. And it's a fourth down and one for the Crimson Tide. Well, the numbers were favorable. I think C.J. Dupree just might have missed a block. He turned it up into the hole and helped on the double team versus going up and getting a linebacker. So James Burnett is going to come in now with D. Williams going deep. His name is D.E.E. -E. It's not D. apostrophe. His first name is D. D. Williams is deep for the Tennessee Volunteers. And here's Burnett. Booms that one away. It takes an Alabama roll all the way down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. So a good job right there. 50 yards on the punt and no return. 10.45 time remaining. Opening quarter. We're just getting going, but the Tennessee Volunteers have a 7 to nothing lead here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Get your game face on and roll tide with Shoe Station. As a proud sponsor of Alabama football, Shoe Station is the place to shop for game day style and trends. With a store in Tuscaloosa, two convenient locations in Birmingham, and stores all over the Gulf Coast, you can score big with our massive assortment of men's, women's, and kids' shoes from all the top brands. Check out ShoeStation.com forward slash Bama today to shop game day ready shoes. ShoeStation.com forward slash Bama. What widens the eyes, tightens the stomach, and flutters the heart. Adrenaline. Feel it for yourself in the Toyota RAV4, Camry, Corolla, and Tacoma. Lease a new 2023 Toyota RAV4 LE for $319 a month for 36 months. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid through October 31st, 2023. Well-qualified lessees with approved credit through Southeast Toyota Finance. 3618 due at sign. No security deposit with select equipment. 350 disposition fee. Excludes tax tag, registration title, and dealer fee. See dealer for details. SeatGeek's the ticketing app for fans like the sideline shot caller. Come on, boys, pick up the pace. SeatGeek got him a great deal on seats right near the action, so when he yells, Where are you going? Block him! 
you can be absolutely sure the players heard them. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Ten forty-five left to go in the first quarter. Tennessee with a seven-nothing lead against Alabama. Crimson Tide fans are reminded to stay up to date with all recommended vaccinations. You know, flu season is coming, and COVID nineteen continues to affect our community. So don't wait. Vaccinate. Visit alabamapublichealth.gov backslash imm today to learn more about how you can stay up to date on vaccinations. ADPH is proud to support the Crimson Tide. All right, Roger Hoover. Thank you very much. Hey, good news. Tim Keenan's back in the lineup. Yeah, that, that is good news, and he, his arm was already kind of wrapped up, so maybe he just got a little stinger there on that left side, but yeah. good to see him back in the lineup. Here come the volunteers to the line of scrimmage. 10.45 remaining opening quarter. First and 10. The toss to Jalen Wright. He'll go left side, got tripped up, but is unable to really turn it upfield because Bama got Malachi Moore penetrating and stripping him up so it's going to be a second down upcoming now it'll be second and 14 here's the inside give again and this time back to the original line of scrimmage Jalen Wright himself again so it's now third down upcoming Tennessee two of two in third down conversions so one of the keys is making Tennessee uncomfortable third and long situations is not where they want to be now you have to turn up the heat while maintaining rush lane discipline they've got castles wide to the near side here now the quarterback looks throws it underneath on a screen it is going to be short of the first down as a nice grab again was made by uh, Jalen Wright but Justin Aboigby saw that one coming all the way and he makes the tackle so a three and out a big truck work stop for the Crimson Tide defense right there and now Jackson Ross from Melbourne Australia another Australian getting set to punt it away to Kool-Aid McKinstry who is standing deep at his own 30 yard line here's the snap and the kick it bounces at the 40 to the 35 stops at the 31 yard line so decent field position for the Crimson Knight tied now 46 yards on the punt and there is no return Right now, we have to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Again, 9-10 left to go in this first quarter. It is Tennessee with a 7-0 lead against Alabama. This third Saturday in October game is presented by Coca-Cola. Huge thank you to Coca-Cola for your support of Alabama athletics. Be sure to grab game day winning taste with Coke Zero Sugar. It's taste you can't beat. Well, Roger, you missed it. You couldn't be there last night, but we had another magnificent meal at Big Mike's Steakhouse in Moundville. And I wanted to thank all the guys and ladies. You know, they got great service in addition to uh, the food. Last night, I had that uh, soft stack, that uh, fried green tomatoes topped with a, uh, a uh, oh, I guess you call it a crab cake, a big one, with a couple of uh, shrimp on top of that, all covered with ramelade sauce. And my wife, Claudette, she had the catfish, which was, I had to try some, of course. It was absolutely <laughs> spectacular. And there was so much catfish there, you could have fed half a Moundville. Folks, if you're looking for a place to go, remember, Big Mike's Steakhouse in Thomasville, Andalusia, Gunnersville, Orange Beach, Auburn, and the one closest to us here in Moundville. Big Mike Steakhouse and online it's mikessteakhouse.com. You can check with them for hours, details, and you'll have yourself a magnificent meal. Sounds absolutely delicious, and we just love seeing the Crimson Tide stop Tennessee getting that three and out. As you mentioned, that was our big time stop by Bama that's presented by TruckWorks, the official commercial truck dealer of the Crimson Tide. 13 locations all across the southeast to keep you and your business rolling. Nine minutes, ten seconds remaining in this opening quarter, which is getting off to a very 
slow start because we've had uh, a number of uh, timeouts. And our brethren at CBS have uh, now come back from their timeout, and we're set to go again. So Alabama with Jace McClellan as the running back. Burton is wide to the far side. Milrow claps his hands, steps back, under pressure, has time, throws, and it's caught at the 48-yard line by Malik Benson, and he came back nicely for that one, a first first down of the day for Bama. And also great protection by that offensive line. Tennessee actually rolled a safety down and brought him in pressure, picked up nicely by the running back, and you had two open receivers in that 20-yard range for Jalen Milrow. And our friends at ATEX sponsoring that first first down of the ball game for Alabama. Now, here on an inside handoff, Jace McClellan finds running room across the midfield stripe and gets down to the 48-yard line of Tennessee, heading right to left. Seth McLaughlin and J.C. Latham led the blocking that time for McLaughlin, or excuse me, for uh, McClellan. Now here's the inside give again, and this time there's nothing there over the left side. Caden Proctor had things kind of blocked up. Elijah Herring came shooting through. Yeah, these two linebackers for Tennessee, awfully aggressive, stepping down into those A and B gaps, and we're not getting much movement just on the straight handoff. Roy Dell Williams now checks in. He's a tailback replacing Chase McClellan. You've got three wides to the right, one man wide to the near side. Quarterback claps his hands. Jalen Milrow standing back at his own 47. He looks at the sideline. Plays being signaled in. Down to six on the play clock. Five, four. He gets the snap away. He looks and throws a fade route far side. It is out of bounds looking for Isaiah Bond at about the 25-yard line. He was open for a while. Yeah, he had a step on him. Roy Dale did a nice job of picking up the pressure from the backer, so plenty of time to, to deliver the ball down the field. Ball just thrown too far outside as it drifted out of bounds. So it's time for Alabama to punt again. The first punt was a 50-yarder, 5-0 for Burnett. And now D. Williams goes back deep again to the 10-yard line. And Burnup, standing at his own 40, awaits the snap. Neelan Hibbett snaps it. And Burnup skies this one. Fair catch being made. It'll be at around the 15-16 yard line. And that's where Tennessee will be going to work first and 10. They lead 7-0 after a 39-yard Pass from Milton to White. That capped off an eight-play, 75-yard scoring drive back earlier in this first quarter. We've got 7.39, excuse me, 7.30 to go now in the opening quarter of play. Jabari Small now checks into the lineup. He's in it running back, replacing Jalen Wright, who's done the work so far. Tight end in motion. They lead the quarterback on the option. The toss to the near side. And Small gets racked up there after he got hit by Caleb Down. The play will get out to about the 21-yard line. Brings up a second down and four. Here now the snap again. Looking, throwing to the right sideline. Grab is made by Ramel Keaton. He'll spin around the defender and pick up a first down as Terry and Arnold was in the vicinity. So now they move the chains and the volunteers work it left to right as you listen. 6.49 remaining in the opening quarter. 7-0 Tennessee. The snap coming off the near hash mark. Joe Milton the third, the former Michigan Wolverine, gets the snap, keeps it himself. Now the option toss to the far sideline, and that time Jabari Small was wrapped up by Malachi Moore and others who went nicely laterally. 
Tennessee employing a lot of option looks here early on, and that's a huge compliment to the speed and fear they have of these two bookends for Alabama. That's the great equalizer, but we're doing a really nice job of stringing that thing out to the, to the sideline. That was a pickup of a yard. Here's a second and nine. Now small to the near side. He cuts back against the defense, and a nice play right there. Damon Payne Jr. was a man doing the job to contain that play and forcing the running back the other way. Yeah, they tried to get to the outside, but we strung it once again and forced it back underneath where there was plenty of help. Payne, the sophomore from Belleville, Michigan. Now a third down and eight. Football is at the ball zone 37. They've got it with Milton in the backfield. Gets the snap. Looks left and throws. Catch is made. It'll be Squirrel White. What's the problem with Squirrel White, Christian? Is he just that elusive that we're having trouble keeping up with him? Yeah, he's a very elusive guy. And you've got Malachi Moore in coverage right there, a guy who just got back from an ankle injury. So it's hard to keep up with a fast guy like Squirrel White. Here now into the shotgun again with the tight end in motion. That's Jacob Warren. He goes to the far side of the formation. Milton calls his own number. Takes off running to the near side. He angles with a flag down. He angles to the sideline, but the flag back at the 40 would likely indicate holding against Tennessee. Holding offense number 54. So Gerald Mincy, guilty of the hold. Joe Milton. He's dangerous, though. The guy can run. He's got size. And I remember that game he played with the Wolverines against Indiana. And he threw for 344 yards that day. Here's Dylan Sampson now in and running back. He'll go wide to the left. Here goes the quarterback running. We just spoke of that. And Milton gets across midfield to the 47. Kool-Aid McKinstry came up. Well, and that was one of those times where they emptied the backfield, and Deontay Lawson basically has man-to-man -man with Joe Milton. He went up inside, and Joe Milton bounced it to the edge, and there was no help. Now here, now the handoff. Again, a big hole over the left side. Taking a couple of hits is uh, Dylan Sampson. The sophomore from Baton Rouge went to Dutchtown High School but got away from the LSU Tigers. He now quickly brings the team back to the line of scrimmage. High as a play action fake. Milton throws near side. Catch by Keaton. Keaton spins around, finds an opening, and he'll get across the yard line to gain a 14 yard pickup and a first down for the Volunteers. All kinds of cushion there on the edge. I say it's like we really respect their speed, and they're just hitting us with some little eight yard hooks. 4.06 to go, opening quarter. 7 0 Tennessee. Here's Milton. Play action. Throws across the middle. Catch by Thornton. And that time it comes loose and is dropped at the five-yard line. Dante Thornton had it at the five, but it came loose and fell harmlessly to the grass. Fortunately, he just took his eyes off because he was open and he had to catch. Yes, he did. Samson is the running back. Thornton wide to the left side. One of two men going there. Keaton is wide to the near side. 3.49, time remaining, opening quarter, 7-0 Tennessee. Here's Joe Milton the third. Play action, he'll dump it loose to the left side, and it's taken and carried down to the 15 by McCallum Castles, the tight end, who snuck through onto the left side big, and was there. Yeah, big ass there for Jalen Key, who is in coverage and does a nice job of tackling it up high and slinging him to the ground, but another third and medium, third and short for Tennessee. Third and four. Here now the give up the middle, first down Tennessee, more than necessary as Dylan Sampson runs forward, finally gets pushed back by Alabama's gang tackling, but the forward progress will get him down to the six-yard line. Dylan Sampson, he is right now the number five rusher in the Southeastern Conference, and you can see why. They're doing a nice job of running the ball. We're not allow really allowing our linebackers to get downhill very quickly. These these holes, these, these backs are very patient as they allow the blocks to develop up front. Samson, who had 139 yards against Texas San Antonio, 
in week four is now staying in the backfield. Two wides left, one to the right. Man in motion, quarterback keeper going over the left side, and he'll get stacked up with no gain on the play. It'll be a second down coming up. Smith and Aboigby were there to make the stop. There's two, two thoughts there on the option play. Do you let the quarterback keep the ball and just keep peppering him and hammering in? I don't know if that's necessarily the best choice against Tennessee as big as Milton is. Second and goal from the six-yard line. Here's the throw over everybody's head and tipped away. Incomplete. McCallum Castles, the six-foot-six tall tight end, was the intended receiver. We got away with one right there. That Caleb, holding call? Caleb, Caleb Downs yeah. pretty much tackled him around the waist or was holding on for dear life, yeah. and rightfully so. Otherwise, it's a touchdown, but no call on the play. I wasn't going to say it because if they didn't call it, it didn't happen, but you're right. But you know what? Deontay Lawson actually tipped that ball, so yes. it doesn't matter. Here now a third and goal from six yards out. The snap. Back into the empty backfield and a throw. It's incomplete. That time Deontay Lawson stayed with Dylan Sampson and came up to meet him. And they're going to have to try the field goal. Justin Aboigby was there to put pressure on the quarterback for that early release. Yeah, awfully big stop there for this Alabama defense, forcing the field goal try for Tennessee. I mean, they are absolutely going up and down the field right now. Thank goodness we're going to force them to a field goal. It'll be a 24-yard field goal try. Campbell is 5 of 5 from this distance this year. Just off the far hash mark. The kick going to your right as you listen. And it is up. And it is good. So the Tennessee Volunteers now with a 10 to nothing lead over the Alabama Crimson Tide. That was a lengthy drive. Of course, as many plays as they run in a hurry. That's 15 plays, 79 yards in five minutes and 39, se five minutes and 30 seconds. And that's going to be the field goal for the Volunteers as they maintain their lead. Christian, your thoughts from your vantage point down there on the Alabama sideline. Well, this Tennessee offense is doing exactly what we thought they would do. They're going tempo, and I mentioned it earlier, Eli, they want to attack the perimeter. They want to get you as thin as possible. That's why we keep seeing them working these screen games. And then what, they, what happens is once they get you outside, you have a thin box, and they're going to run the football effectively. We just got to do a much better job of trying to tackle in space and get him back lined up. You, as you can see on that last drive, guys started sh showing fatigue pretty much. I mean, uh, we, we had a great stop, uh, which was great, but it, it very much could have been a touchdown. If there was a better throw on that last pass by Milton, but another big stop by the defense. Well, Christian, I got one follow-up to that. It almost looks like our pass rush. I mean, Tennessee's thrown the ball more than I think any of us anticipated. It's almost like this defensive front is really geared up to stop the run, and all of a sudden it ain't coming. Exactly, and, and, and they're smart for doing that. We all thought they would run the ball more, but with them working that perimeter, it's making our guys turn and run, and that gets them even more tired. So a really good game plan by Tennessee, but that's what you expect out of a Josh Heifel-type team. And so we just, like I said, the defense alignment, they got to get out of the stack. they got to help out. And our cornerbacks have to be ready to fly down in the run support and make those gains as short as possible. Our Cook's Pest Control sideline reporter, Chris Mil Christian Miller, with that update. And here's the kick. And the football, as it did earlier, sails into and out of the end zone. And uh, Alabama now will go back to work first and ten. How tough for a quarterback, Tyler, to run this kind of a high-speed offense? Actually, it's probably easier because you're getting up to the line of scrimmage. You're forcing the defense to go ahead and show their hand, and then they have to dictate what they're going to do, and then you make an adjustment because you have so much time on the play clock. Alabama, though, right here, has to be able to respond with points. Boots and Dupree are the two tight ends. They'll both shift over to the right side of the line. Here now, Milrow gets the snap at the 20 with the handoff inside. Out by Roydell Williams to the 29-yard line. So we've, had, so we've had a couple of successful first down runs where we picked up four or five, but we've not been able to follow it up with a successful second down. Alabama has to stay ahead of the chains. They can't afford to be in third and six. 
Kobe Bryant, excuse me, Kobe Bryant, Lord. Kobe Prentice is in the uh, lineup now for Alabama. Ooch took a seat. Milroe looking and looking and looking and dancing away from problems. And he'll just throw it to the sidelines. He had Omari Thomas, the defensive tackle, chasing him and mimicking every stride he took. And that was finally enough for Jalen to throw it away. And unfortunately, though, he rolled to the right when he broke containment. But all of his pass routes were to the left. He had a couple of opportunities. Could have hit Jaylen, uh, Burton around a four or five yard gain. Instead, he tried to elect it to pull it down and, and vacate to the right. Here's a third down and six. A minute 24 to go in the opening quarter. Here's the snap. Milrow stands in. Milrow lost the ball, and it's covered up by whom? Everybody has it, and Tennessee is on the bottom of the pile. Milrow got hit. The ball came loose, and the volunteers, Omar Norman Lott, the defensive tackle, picks it up. Yeah, the pressure came on the left side. Caden Proctor actually squared his guy up pretty doggone good. He just got bull rushed right back into Jalen Milrow. He had position, didn't get beat around the edge, but Milrow's got to feel that pressure and step up into the pocket. He kind of sat flat-footed right where he set up. And that's what allowed the, the pr press pressure just to get right on him. A minute 16 to go in this opening quarter. Alabama trailing 10-0 to the Tennessee Volunteers. Bama has won the last nine in a row in this stadium against, uh, against Tennessee, and they have won 15 of the last 16 against Tennessee. Here now the snap. Back to throw Joe Milton. Looks, loads up, finds a man cruising at the nine. That's the squirrel. Squirrel White. And he gets down to the nine-yard line in the first down. And both Dallas Turner and Deontay uh, were right there with Squirrel. And both of them came up to take Milton, and he just dumped it over their head. Here now Milton in the backfield. Steps up to Audible. Through the din of this crowd. He'll clap his hands, get the waist high snap, and then toss it into the end zone. But it's out of bounds over everybody's head. He was looking for Caleb Webb on the far side, but he had coverage on him from Kool-Aid McKinstry. Nice job of Kool-Aid. Staying on the inside and forcing that throw over to the top. I don't think Joe Milton could be accurate enough to drop that in there consistently throughout the course of this game. Jabari Small now checks in. Quick snap. Milton lunges forward. He may get a yard. It'll be a third and goal from eight yards away now. Dallas Turner and others, Deontay, were there to make the stop. But this is a big play right here. Tennessee four of six in third down conversions today. Boy, a tip pass for an interception would be great, wouldn't it? Lord, and then a run back for the touchdown. If we're dreaming, let's do it. Here now the snap. Quarterback stands in, looks to the end zone, through the hands of Jacob Warren, who was alone in the end zone. He had shed Deontay Lawson, but it was a high throw, and it went right through his fingertips. And it wasn't necessarily easy throw either. Deontay Lawson being underneath him, that ball had to go over the top with some touch, and it, but it also had to be thrown pretty doggone firm. Otherwise, his, receiver, his tight end is out of the end zone. Now a 26-yard field goal try. Campbell hit from 24 yards earlier off the near hash mark. Matthew Solansky is the snapper. Ross the holder. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So a 26-yard field goal by Charles Campbell. And the Tennessee Volunteers now lead 13-0. It's a nice job of the defense forcing another field goal off of the, uh, you know, the turnover there that can't have those down here, especially when you're backed up coming out. 
We talked about the importance of this Alabama offense, though, of getting, staying ahead of schedule, making successful second down positive yardage to get them in third and short. And they didn't do it right there, and it cost them big time as it set up a third and long, third and medium. They got the pressure, the turnover. Good job by that defense, but got to have something going here offensively. Five plays on the Bromberg scoring drive. 15 yards in one minute and three seconds. And Tennessee continuing to lead here in the opening quarter. 13 to nothing. We've got 11 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. And Alabama needs to get that offense going. Tennessee now has an interesting look out there. They got five players along the near side, five players along the far side, and the kicker all alone in the middle. Now the players on the end move into the middle, and here's the kick. End over end into the end zone, and it's coming out. Uh, it's going to be brought out to the 19, to the 20. Across the 20 is Law getting out to the 22-yard line. So not quite what he could have gotten had he let it go into the end zone. Tough call, though. You know, normally I'm always like, let just call the touchback. Let's take it over to the yeah. 25. But the way this offense has been performing so far, you might need an explosive play, and you're not going to get one just by taking a knee. So Alabama will start first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. Jace McClellan is the setback. He's lined up in the pistol right now behind the quarterback, Jalen Milrow. Here's the snap. Jace gets the handoff, goes up the middle, spins with a couple of guys. A towel or two go flying, and then the whistle sound as McClellan is gang-tackled and... Uh, that is the end of the quarter. Robbie Ooch threw a nice little block in there to get Jace some running back. Yeah, run. nice, nice physical play up front as we were able to open up a nice cut black lane. That's a good productive play there on first down. One quarter complete here in Tuscaloosa. It's the visiting Tennessee Volunteers, 13, Alabama nothing. Here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. When the game goes into overtime. But the game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Ashley Johnston, and I'm an organ donor. I'm Rob Vaughn, and I'm an organ donor. I'm Patrick Murphy, and I'm an organ donor. I'm Nick Saban, and I'm an organ donor. I'm Nate Oates, and I'm an organ donor. And I'm Tyler Watts. I'm also an organ donor. Saving a life has never been easier. You can register online at LegacyofHope.org. Give the gift of life. Be an organ donor. In the beginning was Daytona. Here we go. The birthplace of speed. The launch pad of legends. The great American race. Every driver looking to be remembered. Every fan looking for something they'll never forget. Daytona 500 at Daytona International Speedway. February 18th, 2024. Secure your seats now at Daytona500.com. And our scores are presented live this afternoon by the folks at Alabama Power, proud to support the Crimson Tide. I'm Brian Houseworth, number 20 Missouri, leading South Carolina 14-0. That game is in the second quarter at Pro Field in Columbia, Washington State. Number 9 Oregon, tied right now, three apiece. Also, number 22 Air Force beats Navy 17-6. And yes, that was Roger Staubach honored today at the game. Let's send you back right now to Brian Denny. Take it away, Roger. 
Thank you, Brian. The first quarter recap is presented by Knox Pest Control. With over 80 years of experience, Knox Pest Control has been serving the communities of Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and North Florida, offering pest control, wildlife control, and lawn care. Call 877-KNOX-PEST or visit knoxpest.com. Knox knocks them out. It's Tennessee with a 13-0 lead over Alabama through the first 15 minutes of play. One touchdown and two field goals so far by Tennessee for the scoring. This third Saturday in October matchup is presented by Coca-Cola. Thank you to Coca-Cola for your support of Alabama Athletics. Be sure to grab game day winning taste with Coke Zero Sugar Taste You Can't Beat. We are live inside the Alabama Credit Union broadcast booth. Alabama Credit Union, feel good about your money. Once again on the call, here's Eli Gold. Roger, thank you. We're just watching the Alabama cross-country teams, the men's and women's teams, being honored for their SEC championship as that crew worked so very, very hard how fast were you, uh, Tyler? Were you a uh, candidate for the cross-country team? <laughs> <laughs> Running is punishment. Yes. Every football player will tell you that. Yes, it is. No, I watched you run. That's why I just feel like... I throw look like that a, in and make I, everybody smile a I little bit. I look like a cross-country guy out there with the pace I was setting. Yeah. All right, here we go, Alabama. First and ten, excuse me, second down and four now. Second and four, football at their own 27. Bama going left to right. Here now is the give on the end around. It's a nice power move by Kendrick Law. He gets behind everybody across the 40 and all the way down to the 39-yard line. He came all the way around on the power move, and a 36-yard run ensued. And hopefully that explosive play there with a nice pickup on second down will kind of get spark this offense going. Alabama now first and 10 from the 39. Here's the give. Looking for running room, Jace McClellan. And he'll get a couple three yards. Everybody, well, somebody's not getting up, but now he does. That was Jace, who was slow and getting to his feet. Everybody kind of holding their breath there. Roy Dell Williams will now come in as his substitute. Mill Roll, the quarterback. He has Roy Dell to his left rear. Two wideouts to the left side on a second down and eight. Man in motion. That was a reverse on the uh, screen. It was a counter play. Roy Dell Williams there. For a moment, it looked like a broken play, but I don't think it was. No, it was just no. on the backside screen there, but our yeah. offensive linemen on the left side were very slow in getting out. Yeah. Tennessee was able to have their corner vacate about 20 yards downfield and then come up and make the open field tackle because there were no linemen out there to pick him up. Third down and seven. Bama, nothing of two in third down conversions today. Here's a third and seven with 13-17 remaining in the first half. The tight end, Amari Nyblack in motion to the near side. Now going with Roy Dell Williams to his right. Play clock to two. They get it off, but the quarterback does not, and Milrow is taken down as everybody vacated the backfield, and that was Omar Norman Lutt for the second time, making a big play today for the ball. Yeah, interesting call there on third and long, and you have to think Alabama was going to go for it if they had any positive yardage to set up a fourth down opportunity. Read option, though, Norman Lott is on the back side, and it was just a poor read by Jalen Milrow. Should have given that ball. Second sack of the day for the Tennessee Volunteers, and Bama now to punt it away. Averaging 41 yards a punt today is James Burnett. And the kick, a high, high, high kick, spirals down and then takes a big Tennessee roll into the end zone. A 43-yard punt, no return, and we have a timeout here in Tuscaloosa. 12-18, time remaining. Opening half, it's the Volunteers 13, and the Crimson Tide no score. This is the Crimson Tide Sport Network. From Learfield. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. 
That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of Alabama Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Crimson Tide Football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide Football from Learfield. Put your phone on D&D, that means that do not disturb when you're driving. And when you're going from point A to B, I need you to stay safe, please, so always sing with me. So put your phone on D&D, that means that do not disturb when you're driving. And when you're going from point A to B, I need you to stay safe, please, so always remember this beat. Don't drive distracted. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Hey, son, how are you feeling? Um, uh, I'm fine, Pops. What's on your mind? I just, I can't explain it. Without a compass, eyes waiting, started to wander. Metamorphosis, loss of who you thought you was. When your kid can't find the language, help them find the lyrics. Listen to the Sound It Out album and get tips and tools to start a conversation at sounditouttogether.org. Brought to you by Ad Council and Pivotal Ventures. Tennessee 13, Alabama nothing with 12-18 to go in the second quarter. Across the conference is presented by T-Mobile. T-Mobile bringing 5G to hometowns all across the SEC and a proud partner of the Alabama Crimson side. It was Arkansas falling to 0-5 in SEC play with a 7-3 loss against Mississippi State. State's first win in conference play and already Missouri with a 14-0 lead against South Carolina early in the second quarter in that game in Columbia, Missouri. And of course we'll hear all those scores coming up at halftime on the Alabama Power Scoreboard updates. Jalen Wright is the running back. Tennessee first and 10 from the 20. Here's the throw into the right flat. Caught by Wright, and he'll fight his way forward for a couple three yards to the 23. Open field sack tackle is so important. Caleb Downs missed a tackle there. 12.03 to go in the first half. Tennessee watching as again a throw to the far side goes through the hands of Ramel Keaton. Right now, Terry and Arnold has given up a lot of cushion on these wide receivers for Tennessee. They're creating a lot of space, and it's just easy pitch and catch. Very fortunate for Alabama. That ball just dropped. Tennessee, four of seven and third down conversions. They're at their own 23, going right to left. Bama fans trying to inspire the defense. Bama trailing 13 nothing. Here's a third and seven. Off the far hash mark. The double clap and the snap. Milton throws right side and Bama's got Jalen Wright dead to rights and he is taken out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. Yeah, Tim Keenan was was right there around it. He had nowhere to go with that football just trying to get some sort of positive yardage. They had blockers out front. Tim Keenan ran around it. Terry and Arnold ran around him. Nowhere to go. So now the second punt of the day for the Tennessee Volunteers. Man in motion from the near side to the far. And the Australian kicker, Jackson Ross, booms this one away. It takes a bit of an Alabama roll and hits a Tennessee player. So it's going to be downed at that point. You can't advance it. It would be illegal touching at that point. So the ball will control by Alabama. And they'll spot it inside the 40 at the 39. So it'll be a 42-yard punt and no return. We've got timeout. 11-10 remaining in the opening half. Alabama trailing 13 to nothing here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. At Red Diamond, we know that there's simply nothing better than the perfect sip of fresh brewed iced tea. And we've been working hard to make sure choosing Red Diamond is always easy with only simple ingredients, water, tea leaves, and pure cane sugar, or no sugar. We make sure our tea tastes like, well, tea. Stop by your local cooler and pick up a gallon for a perfect sip today. Red Diamond, perfect, not easy. 
Some people just know that a perfect football field is all about the details. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. Take the head groundskeeper, for example. Hands at 10 and 2. 90 degree turns, perfect stripes every time. He knows because he's done this a hundred times. Just like he knows that paying attention on the road can save safe drivers 40% with Allstate. Saving 40% is based on the national average premium savings for Allstate auto customers with a clean driving record versus those without. Savings vary by state and based on how you buy. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates Northbrook, Illinois. A caring man took a walk. He saw people suffering. Anxiety ran high. Hatred rose. I'll prepare a feast and bring them together, he thought. But some refused to join him. He was heartbroken because he wanted everyone to be filled. Not with food and wine, but with compassion. Jesus welcomed all to the table. Visit HeGetsUs.com to learn more. Eleven minutes, ten seconds left to go in the second quarter. It is Tennessee 13 and Alabama nothing. Earlier we saw the Crimson Tide grab their first first down of the game presented by AAATix.com. Let ATix be your ticket connection to all the Alabama football games. ATix is the ticket. We've seen another first down after that. That bank first first down for the Crimson Tide. Hopefully a lot more coming up here, Eli. I hope so. Only two first downs for the Tide thus far today. And we've got 11-10 to go in the first half. Two tight ends, Alabama. Milrow gets the snap. Everybody, he's going to be covered. He's going to take off running and slide down at the 41-yard line. Great coverage on the part of the volunteer secondary. Yeah, you're trying to set up a home run to either Jermaine Burton or even Isaiah Bond going across the field, and everyone is blanketed. And more importantly, there were no running lanes for Jalen Milrow. Yeah. Bond comes in. Boots goes out. Here's a second down and ten. Nye Black, the tight end in motion, goes to the left side. Here's the toss. McClellan gets towards the left sideline and steps out of bounds at the yard line to gain. Jermaine Burton threw a nice block at the end there, and that sprang Jace McClellan for the first down. Isaiah Bond also on the edge there, but really good hard running by Jace McClellan, picking up a majority of that on his own. Now again, two tight ends, Oots and Dupree, in for Alabama. Bond wide to the near side. Defense comes up to play him tight. Quarterback on the far hash mark. Gets the snap. Gives up the middle. And a gain of a yard and a half or two for Jace McClellan. Nothing more than that. It brings up a second down and nine, shall we say. Aaron Beasley is the linebacker for Tennessee. who Really, we've not had many linemen have a chance to get up to him and apply a block. He's done a really nice job of seeing where the play was developing and then attacking downhill. Second down now, the Crimson Tide with 9.23 to go in the first half. Trailing and pressure, and it's knocked down out of midair by the volunteer defense. That time it was deflected by Tennessee. Joshua Josephs came through. The Leo backer as they call him they tried to set up a backside screen pass to cj dupree a tight end screen pass and it was well developed i think milro could have held onto that ball just a hair longer and made an accurate throw so now bama nothing of four and third down conversions here's a third and seven football at the 46 yard line it's a low snap. Milro picks it up, throws far side. Wide open is Jermaine Burton, and he's got the first down and gets it inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. Boy, with a little bit of time, I think this secondary for Tennessee is gettable. If you just buy yourself a little bit of time, it's a nice throw in a little post corner route, found the soft zone, and delivered a strike. That's a throw that Milro has really struggled with this year, but drove that one into Jermaine Burton. Uh, bank first, first down for the Crimson Tide right there as they now go to work first and 10 24 yard line here now the shove up on the left side ball is taken by Isaiah Bond and he'll fight his way for a first down 
not a true shovel pass, but it was close to it. Yeah, the, the play action went inside, so the linebackers for Tennessee and even the ends were biting, trying to stop the run, and then Bond is going across the scrimmage. The formation is able to sneak into the flat completely unaccounted for. And one of the volunteer players is injured. That's Kamal Haddon, who now gets up the cornerback from Michigan. He transferred from Auburn to the Tennessee Volunteers, and now he goes down again uh, with the trainers around him at about the 12-yard line. You know, the, the cool thing to do now as a DB is just to lower your shoulder and try to knock somebody out. Well, when you do that, sometimes you get stingers in that shoulder because the guy holding the ball, he's going to hit you too. Yeah, and now he takes another 10 or 12 strides and goes down again. So, yeah, he got, uh, he got the bones rattled there. No question about that. Hey, folks, remember, Bama is off next weekend. So don't look for us here. Bama's off next week. Two weeks from today, at a time to be announced, the LSU Tigers will be in town. That's two weeks from today. But next Saturday, the Crimson Tide will have their off weekend. Then LSU, then the trip to Kentucky, then Chattanooga, and then the trip to Auburn for the Iron Bowl. Well, we talked about crossing the 50 and walking away with points. And so far, Alabama has had two trips across the 50 and has nothing to show for it. Three is not good enough in this scenario. You have got to walk away with a touchdown. 8.45 to go, first half. 13-0 Tennessee. Bama a first and ten from the ball 13. Man in motion. Here's the give. Left side. Nowhere to go. Jace McClellan gets snowed under and manages to get back to the line of scrimmage. Aaron Beasley, of whom you spoke earlier, there to make the uh, the stop as Bama's in the Chick-fil-A red zone. Roy Dell Williams will be brought in. Robbie Oots leaves. Isaiah Bond leaves. Now Oots comes back. And now Tennessee says, hey, you can't do that or else we get a chance to substitute again. You ought to have to make an effort, though, to actually get onto the field. This all, all right, so this all starts with poor communication of not understanding the personnel groupings for Alabama. Robbie Hughes gets all the way to the sideline and realizes it's supposed to be on there. So what does Tennessee do? Realizing the play clock is down to 16 seconds, they slow play and casually run somebody off the sideline, not in a hurry at all to get onto the field. It costs Alabama a timeout, though. Crimson Tide having to use a timeout there. What is the communication? Let's go down to Christian. Christian, does does somebody come up to you and say, you are in now? Do they hit you on the shoulder pads? Do they? How, how do they communicate in a, in a substitution role such as that? Typically, Eli, they'll have a coach on the sideline that's going to direct you to get out of there, or sometimes you'll kind of know which package you're in that you need to be out there. But in a situation like that, it almost seems like that was intentional on their behalf. It was absolutely intentional by Tennessee and really smart. They, they forced us to call a timeout. Yep. Dupree and Nyblack are now in as the two tight ends. Here's a second down and 10. Alabama at the 13 of Tennessee. Balls lead 13-0. 7.46, time remaining. Opening half from the far hash mark on this sun-drenched day. Here's the give to Roy Dell Williams. And he gets three yards down to the 10. And it's going to bring up a third down and seven now. Elijah Herring and Omari Thomas, the guy they call Big O, combining on that stop for Tennessee. So now Black will line up a little bit outside. He does have a favorable size advantage should he work the middle of the field. Bama one of five in third down conversions today. Here's the snap. No roll. Looks, fires, end zone. Touchdown, Jermaine Burton. 
That was a bullet, a 10-yard bullet, and my goodness, did Alabama ever need that? Yeah, they did. That was huge there, especially on third and seven when we struggled so much on third and long situations. But the trips really forced the secondary for Tennessee to rotate over, which almost set up a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Jermaine Burton. He found the end zone and just sat it down. In the, and as you mentioned, a strike from Jalen Milrow. It was. That, that throw had mustard on it. Maybe even a little relish and sauerkraut. Extra point. Up and good. And now Tennessee has a 13 to 7 lead over the Alabama Crimson Tide. The Bromberg scoring drive will be nine plays on that drive. 59 yards, four minutes and five seconds. And Alabama now within shouting distance. It's 13 7 Tennessee here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. When you live in SEC country, you feel it everywhere you go. The traditions and rivalries surround you. As much as you celebrate the game, Regions celebrates your financial wins even more. And like SEC fans, we'll never quit. Because in an SEC world, we're the SEC Bank. Regions, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC. Crimson Tide football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. Adoption of teens from foster care is a topic not enough people know about, and we're here to change that. I'm April Dinwiddie, host of the new podcast, Navigating Adoption, presented by Adopt US Kids. Each episode brings you compelling real-life adoption stories told by the families that live them with commentary from experts. Visit adoptuskids.org slash podcast or subscribe to Navigating Adoption, presented by Adopt US Kids. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families and the Act Council. Tom has been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, I think one of the students had asked the question and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. I was really starting to worry. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives, but he was there beside me. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Tennessee 13, Alabama 7, 7.05 left to go in this second quarter. The Crimson Tide just scored from the Chick-fil-A Red Zone. Download the Chick-fil-A app to claim your free Chick-fil-A offer by midnight tonight. Offer is redeemable at participating Alabama Chick-fil-A restaurants next week, Monday through Friday. Alabama getting set to kick it away to D. Williams. This one is short in the end zone, but he'll let it go, and it then bounces into and out of the end zone. So the Volunteers will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. Quarterback, Joe Milton III. As Jalen Wright behind him as the running back. Again, Milton, a fifth-year senior from Florida by way of the University of Michigan. Claps his hands once, twice. Gives the handoff. And it goes nowhere. Jalen Wright gets covered up by the tie. That was Justin Aboigby. It was on that stop virtually before the play even began. Christian's always talking about winning your box. And Justin Aboibe not only takes on a lead blocker, but makes the tackle for a loss. Now Jacob Warren in motion, the tight end. Handoff goes inside. And limited running room because Aboibe again is there to shut things down. Boy, I wouldn't take him off the field right now, even though a third no. long situation. This is a huge play right here. If Bama can keep Tennessee bottled up and then take the momentum and score it again, that would put Bama on top. 
Milton gets the snap, looks right, steps up. Oh, my, everybody overruns him. And he'll dash forward and get the first down at the 35-yard line. Jihad Campbell had an opportunity there in the backfield, and Joe Milton was just able to escape him. And then even Dallas Turner called him around four yards shy, but he lunged forward for the first down. Now, quickly, everybody's moving, and they snap the ball. Every Previous play was going to be down the other line again. Previous play is under review. Okay, they're going to look and see whether he got the first down or not. Yeah, for some reason, Joe Milton tried to cut back as Dallas Turner was coming across to make the field, or the tackle, rather, and that slowed his momentum down and did his knee come down. Well, Ooh, if he did, it is awfully close. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's it's going to be depending on the angle. Well, his elbow is down. I don't, I don't know how you can overturn that. Uh, yeah, I don't see any way they'll be able. I, I, I'd love to see them overturn it, but I just don't see how they'll be able to. Regardless, though, I like the stoppage of play. Tennessee, when they get in rhythm, they have been awfully difficult today. Yeah. Referee Ken Williamson has gone across to peer into the monitor. That's at the 20-yard line to our left. All the players milling around at the 30 at the other end over to our right. So the only thing they could be looking at, though, is was his elbow down. Yeah, did that elbow hit? I don't know. And here's Williamson to tell us what transpired. After further review, Hunter was down the 34 and a half yard line. Wow. That'll make a fourth down. All right. 34 and a half yard line. So it is fourth down. And let's see what kind of a riverboat gambler Josh Heifel is. Well, you know he's going to try to draw us off if nothing else. Yeah. Try to draw Alabama off if nothing else. Joel Milton stays out there. Ramel Keaton goes wide to the far side. Squirrel White and Chaz Nimrod are wide to the near side. Now those men go towards the formation. So everybody is tight. The quarterback gets the snap, goes right, cuts left, and I don't know if he got, got the there. I don't know if he got there. I don't know if he made it. I think Alabama took away the outside, and when he tried to cut back, I don't believe he made it. Yeah, he's short. Dallas Turner had a chance in the backfield, yep. and like How you said, about that? he wanted to get to the edge, and Dallas Turner forced it back up, and there was just enough help. I thought he was going to be able to get across the 35, yeah. but he did not. Jihad Campbell was one of the men in there in the middle of all that. How about that? And now, let's see, with 529 to go in the first half, let's see what Bama can do with some momentum, having just scored a touchdown on the Mill Road to Burton pass. Well, uh, now the booth is taking another look at this one as well. They hadn't called it. But... Dupree and Nye Black are the two tight ends. They're sticking. And they're sticking with it. It is Alabama ball after stopping the Volunteers on fourth down and a half yard. So now out of the pistol formation. Alabama with the snap at the 35. Man in motion from the far side. Kendrick Law tries to stretch the field and does. He was going to go down for a loss. Ends up picking up a yard or two out to the 30 and a half on the near sideline. Judy Laley, the cornerback, had him dead to right there in the backfield, but man, what speed. Speed and maneuverability. The body language shook up Judy Lally on that play. Here now a second down and six. No roll, yells, brings Bond in motion. Gives the handoff to Jace McClellan. And he'll get inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. And it's going to be a third down and three and a half or four for the Crimson Tide right here. 
I like how Alabama's taking their time right now, bleeding this clock. They've got to walk away with points here. Can't afford a negative play. 4.31, time remaining, first half. It's a 13-7 Tennessee lead. Milro standing back at the 36, and now here come the officials. And they're going to talk something over here. Play of game on the defense. This is How about that? There you go. You don't see that no. call very often. And you especially don't see a cornerback get called yeah. for that. He's sitting there trying, he's barking off different things, trying to get us to jump on the edge. And the back judge heard it and threw the penalty flag. Huge. That's a first down for Alabama. Yeah, normally it's the guys in the interior who are barking signals and what have you. So Alabama first and 10 now from the 23. Jace McClellan, the running back. Nye Black in motion to the near side. In motion is Bond to the far side. Here now the give up the middle and lunging forward to the 20 yard line is Jace McClellan. They had him tied up. Tamarian McDonald had him by the ankles and he just kind of lunged forward and got down to the 20. It's going to be a second and seven. I tell you, we are just one missed tackle away though from breaking a lot of these runs. We're getting better holes up front from this offensive line. Roy Dell Williams in the lineup now for Alabama. He's lined up to the right side of his quarterback. One wide to the near side. Two plus the tight end to the far side. Now Nye Black in motion to the left of the formation. Here's the snap. Milro looks. He's trying to find a wide open defender. And it's tipped away and intercepted by the Tennessee Volunteers. They were looking for Jermaine Burton. But Jalen McCullough was there to tip it away. And it was caught by one of his teammates and the Volunteers. Play well there and get the football back. Ah, uh, missed opportunity there. Jalen, or excuse me, Burton did beat his defender, and the ball was just a little bit underthrown and hung up in the air too long. And that cornerback slaughter was able to go up and bat it away. So Nico Slaughter and Tamari McDonald. And they are just now announcing to the crowd that it is a touchback. And Alabama will start going the other way. Let's break away for this with 310 remaining in the first half. It is Alabama down, trailing 13-7 to the Tennessee Volunteers on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Important reminder, don't delay emergency care, especially for signs of life-threatening and severe illness and injury, such as stroke, heart attack, trauma, and more. Ascension St. Vincent's ER care teams work quickly and listen to understand your health needs and deliver the care that's right for you and your family. Doctors and nurses are here for you 24-7, close to home, and you'll be connected to leading specialists and trusted providers for follow-up care. Visit ascension.org slash St. Vincent's AL care. We've all been caught up in the little chores that pile up every day. The dishes in the sink, the trash that needs taking out, the pesky check engine light. Isn't it time to make a change and escape to a whole new world of possibilities? Where there's dinner without dishes, nights filled with adventure, and every day you feel like a winner. A little change can go a long way when you escape every day at Wing Creek Casino and on the Casinoverse app. Three ten remaining in the second quarter. It's Tennessee 13 and Alabama 7. Bama fans, after another Alabama victory, drop by and celebrate at Full Moon Barbecue now with 16 locations. Always one near you. The best little pork house in Alabama. Join us next for the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report. Let's pause. 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. play 14 yard drive going in two minutes and 19 seconds but couldn't cash in because of that interception so now it's going to be a first down and 10 
Tennessee from their own 20-yard line after the touchback. Alone in the backfield is Milton, keeps it himself, tucks it under his right arm, and he'll run for 11 and a first down. Caleb Downs came up to stop him. Actually, he went under Caleb and uh, eventually got stopped. Here's Jabari Small now in the backfield. Play action fake. Milton throws to the right flat. Caught there by Squirrel White. And he gets a first down out to the 45-yard line. This Alabama secondary is not going to get beat. But unfortunately, they're giving a lot of cushion to these edges for Tennessee. 2.34 to go until halftime. Here now the give to the single setback. Small. He'll run forward and pick up six on the play. Justin Aboigby slowed him down and eventually put him down. Here's the snap again. Play action. Milton looks, throws. A back shoulder fade, and it is caught by Ramel Keaton at the 15-yard line. Ramel Keaton at 6'3", 197, positioned himself beautifully on a 32-yard reception. Here now, Tennessee again, quickly to the line. The inside give. And down to the 25-yard line they go. That was Jabari Small. Well, first you got to stop the bleeding, and these little four-yard and four yard gains on first down between the tackles are just killers because the defensive line is already really tired having to go the length of the field and not being able to substitute. Malachi Moore playing very soft on Squirrel White. Here's the inside give, and it gets down inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Was a big third down right here, isn't it? It is a huge third down. Third and three with a minute ten remaining. Tennessee four of nine in third down conversions. And we all know how uh, we all know how vital these last minute drives yeah. are. They're gonna run the clock down and probably call a timeout. Yeah. Play clock at four, three, two. One timeout. First charge to have the pass to Tennessee. It's a 30 second timeout. It's been explosive play after explosive play for Tennessee, and it all started on that first down. They motioned the back out of the backfield, and we picked it up with a safety, which left us enough people in the box to be able to stop Joe Milton on that quarterback sneak, and instead he was able to bounce it to the edge and pick up the first down. And, Christian, I'd like to know your opinion on this. I mean, are, just, are we just overcommitting from the linebacker level? It's tough to say. You know, when you watch this team, you know, they, they're doing different things, and they've they got a very diverse run uh, scheme that they're attacking us with. But you're right. Sometimes I've seen the middle linebackers, they're attacking the line of scrimmage initially too early, and then we'll see Tennessee kick it to the perimeter. So we just got to find a way to stop, like you said, stop the bleeding because they're, they're just they're making their way down the field, and, and, and it's, it's hard to play defense when you're that tired. When they're going that fast and you're on the field that long, you have no choice but to get the seed. So hopefully we can get a big stop here because it's going to be critical going into halftime. Here's Jabari Small. Thank you, Christian, our Cook's Pest Control sideline reporter. Jabari Small is in it running back, but the quarterback keeps it. He'll go right up the middle and gets down close to the yard line to gain. If he made it or missed it, it'll just be by an inch or so. He's short again. It's short again. So with 28 seconds to go, Here's timeout now being taken. Going on the field in front of the shoulder line today. Biggest play is under review. They're going to review the placement of the football. They're going to make sure they have placed it correctly. And Ken Williamson will look at the play, he'll look at the video, and see exactly where. Yeah, I think. I think he got more than enough. I think they're going to yeah. spot this closer to the nine. Yeah, I believe he made it. As that was the, my live call on the play, but uh, what I say doesn't mean anything. 
It's the guys in stripes, and I don't look good in stripes. Well, I do have them going this way, but not that way. <laughs> They're looking at the replay, and it's tough for us to tell exactly. Ken Williamson, again, on the headset, talking to his crew back in Birmingham. The side judge also with him, looking at uh, the replay, and... That's Brandon Spencer. After further review, the ball reached with the rear end of the ball touching the 10 yard line, which would be enough for a first down. He's put 42 seconds on the game clock. 4 2. Now, folks, remember, Bama will get the ball to start the second half. Well, 16 to 7, when you played like garbage, is a whole lot better than 20 to 7. They got three downs to get it in the end zone. We got to stop. Yeah. Jabari Small is in it running back now. He's lined up to the left rear of Joe Milton. First and ten from the ten. Here's Small. Stiff arms as he goes to the far sideline. And he gets hit out of bounds by Alabama. The tide going peripherally. Jalen Key doing a good job coming up, and then he also had help from Jihad Campbell. Timeout. Tennessee, second of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. Please put 21 seconds on the game clock. 2-1. Well, they reset the game clock to 21 seconds. Thank you. You're welcome. They're going to reset the football here at the 8-yard line. It'll be second and goal from the 8 with 21 seconds to go. You know, all year long, Tennessee has kind of struggled inside the 20-yard line of being able to punch it in for touchdowns. Their explosive offense allows it out in the field. They get down here without those nice open throwing lanes. Things kind of bogged down. It's going to be very important for Alabama to control the line of scrimmage right here. Of course, rushing offense in general, they are number one in the Southeastern Conference and number six in America. That's in general, not inside the uh, red zone as uh, Tyler was talking. Again, Jabari Small, the running back. Second down and goal from the eight, heading to our left. They're standing in the shadows of the far side of the gridiron. Probably going to see a play action here. Running back to the right rear. There's the play action give to Small. He'll bounce off of everybody and get taken down by Alabama. Good job by the Crimson Tide again. And timeout for John Heifel. John Heifel calls time. Jaheim Otis was the guy who darkened the doorway there for the running back, Small. Tennessee is now out of timeouts, but they're also almost out of timeout time period with 16 seconds to go. So they have to throw the ball, obviously, and I think yep. your biggest threat is what if Joe Milton is somehow or another able to escape containment, whether it be back up the middle. I mean, it's the last play if he doesn't make it, but he's the threat that, that you always have to keep an eye on. Yep, there's no more chance for Hypo to stop the clock. The ball is on the six. Alabama trying to hang on to a 13-7 deficit going into halftime. Dylan Sampson, who has run the ball well the few times he has run here today, he now checks in. Two carries for 24 yards for Sampson today. Tight end in motion. Milton gets the snap, drops back, floats it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. It was McCallum Castles, the tight end, who was in motion. And he got position and a nicely touched pass by 
Joe Milton oh, the third. We sold out and we brought the house and they caught us with a tight end with momentum going against Caleb Downs on a corner route. He created a little bit of separation. Joe Milton recognized the pressure and just put the ball out there in a nice spot. McCallum Castles, his second receiving touchdown of the year. Now Charles Campbell to attempt the extra point. It is up and it is good with 12 seconds remaining in the half. Well, it's not a backbreaker, but that's definitely not how you wanted to end this half. You have a scoring opportunity going in. We are guaranteed a field goal. Instead, you throw the interception in the end zone. And not only is Tennessee able to put points, they drive the length of the field and get another score for seven. 20 to 21, or excuse me, 20 to seven. That's a steep hole. So the Bromberg scoring drive, 10 plays, 80 yards in two minutes and 58 seconds. Christian? You know, I was thinking they might do the rub route right there. That's something that a lot of offenses like in that type of situation. That's what they did. We saw the wide receiver run inside, kind of muddy things up. The tight end went right out and got a good space right there for a touchdown. A tough break. Luckily, we get the ball at half. But uh, this is going to be an interesting interview i got to do with Coach Saban coming up. So wish me luck, fellas. Yeah, you'll be fine. But, yes, the coach coming up, that uh, comment brought to you by Golden Flake, the official potato chip of the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's coming up with Christian and the coach here in just a moment or so. Now the kickoff. A short kick angling to the far sideline. It goes out of bounds. All right, so we're going to have the ball for 35 with two timeouts in 12 seconds. Yep. In years past, we may have tried to push it downfield a little bit. I'm not so sure. We don't want to have another mistake. We've already made two. 20 to 7. Tennessee leading Alabama. Of course, you're so tempted, though, with Milrow able to throw those long passes. But it's got to be quick is the only thing. Yeah. So it's almost a catch and run. Yeah. An intermediate five, and it's going to be yard. just one play because if you go real long, you'll use up the whole clock for the guy right. getting downfield. Here's Malik Benson coming wide to the near side. Two wide outs to the far side. They play head up on Benson along the near wing. No roll. Gets the snap. Back pedals. Shoots it to the far side. Caught by Nyblack, the tight end. And he steps out of bounds at the 40. We've got eight seconds now remaining in the first half. Tennessee on top, 20 to 7. And now there's, looks like Jaden Roberts is down. The right guard, he is down on his side. And the trainers are out. Jaden Roberts, the sophomore from Houston. He picked Alabama over Auburn as his collegiate home. 6'5", 316 pounds. And he is still down. The trainers are looking him over. What you got coming up at halftime for us, Roger Hoover? Well, first of all, this injury timeout is brought to you by Andrews Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center, the official sports medicine provider for the Alabama Crimson Tide. But coming up on the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report, we'll give you the stats and facts from the first half for Alabama. Then Brian Houseworth back in our studios. We'll take a look at the Alabama Power scoreboard update. And good to see Jaden Roberts now being helped back to this Crimson Tide sideline. Yeah, he's being helped back. It looks like one of those ankle, and I'm no doctor, obviously. Uh, but it looks like one of those ankle sprains or something like that because the big guy can't put any uh, weight whatsoever. He's walking very gingerly. Yeah. So Darian Dalcourt will come back in. All too familiar with that right guard position as he started the season off as a starter. Yep. Eight seconds. Need about 15, 16 yards maybe. Now well, we'll see. Yeah. Get the ball down to the 40. I don't know, that might be a little far still for even somebody of Will Reichert's ability. Here's the snap. 
waiting for people to get downfield and the throw to the far sideline is well, a completion to Jermaine Burton, but the clocks have reached zero. Well, we should have one or two seconds. I think they were slow Big in jump. stopping that. Well, now, wait a second here. They say that's the end of the first half, but the players have not left the field, and they are being held on their sidelines. So... Ball became dead with one second on the clock. Clock operator, please put one second on the game clock. One second. And you heard Ken Williamson, the referee, ask our clock operator to put a second on the board. Well, at least get an opportunity here to yeah. throw to the end zone if you can buy yourself another time, enough time. Josh Heupel is out there complaining. And I was looking at the clock, and it reached zero. And let's see what happens here. Snapping the ball from their own 48. Milrow chased and taken down. That is going to be the third sack of the ball game for the Tennessee Volunteers. And that is how the first half comes to a close. We'll be hearing from the coach here in just a moment. Don't you go away. Christian Miller and Coach Nick Saban will... Pass over this first half of play. Let's head downstairs for this visit with the coach brought to you by Golden Flake. Coach, thoughts on this first half? Yeah, well, we didn't get off the field on third down, which really hurt us. And then third down play there. You now we blitzed, got picked in man to man. Um, you know, whenever you do that, you wish you'd have played split safeties, but we didn't. So um, we had a guy free at the quarterback, but um, look, we're not out of this game. We got to stay positive. We got to get our players to play like we can play. We're two scores down in the game. Got to play a little better on defense and move the ball on offense. Yes, sir. Thanks, Coach. Coach Nick Saban and uh, Christian Miller, and uh, pretty much what you've been saying all day, uh, Tyler. Yeah, the, the, and that was really the keys of the game is making Tennessee uncomfortable, putting them in third and long. They've had sustained drives over and over and over. We're not able to get off the field consistently on third down, even when the chains are in our favor. But offensively, we got to take a little pressure off this defense and get this crowd back into the game. They've been itching to be a part of it, but since kickoff, they've really just been having to sit on their hands. So this one is halfway done. Alabama trailing Tennessee 20 to 7. Coming up next, the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report. Roger Hoover and the crew bringing you all the action, the scores, highlights, and all sorts of goings on from across the country. So that is coming up next here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Hey there, Bob Baumauer here to enjoy another great football season with y'all. And guess what? The salmon are running. So make sure you try our delicious lemon garlic salmon. And for you land lovers, try our sizzling char grill flat iron Callaway steak complemented with our special shrimp etouffee. And you'll definitely want to tackle our Alabama hot chicken smothered in our zesty and tangy immune boosting special Alabama hot sauce. Baumhauer's legendary fun and legendary food. Bama's football tradition includes 18 national championships and 29 SEC titles. Reminds me of another winning tradition, Cook's Pest Control and the Centricon System, the unbeatable combination for termite protection. You know, I have peace of mind knowing that my home is protected by Cook's and Centricon. Discover how affordable it is to protect your home. Make the right call, Cook's Pest Control. Looky, looky, looky. Champions never give in. That's why Cadence Bank is the teammate to help you get the extra yardage you need to secure victory in your financial journey. Whether you're saving for a dream home, starting a business, or just need to tackle everyday life, we have the teammates, tools, and strategy to help you stay in the game. Dreams are in reach for those who never give up. Visit CadenceBank.com to learn more. That's CadenceBank.com. Your team, your cadence. Cadence Bank, member FDIC. Sports not only bring us together, they inspire us on our own health journeys. Whether we're walking an extra lap, crushing a new goal, or spending time with friends cheering in the stands, we all win when we feel healthier and happier. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama is a proud sponsor of athletic programs across the state. Because a healthier Alabama is a happier Alabama. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. We cover what matters. This is the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Full Moon Barbecue, the best little pork house in Alabama. Alabama football is also brought to you by BASF, We Create Chemistry, and by Sherwin-Williams. Looking for a color change? Ask Sherwin-Williams. Shop online or at your local store. Welcome in to the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report. At halftime, Alabama trailing Tennessee 20-7. to Welcome back to Ryan Day Stadium. I'm Roger Hoover. The game stats and facts are brought to you by Cadence Bank. Your team, your cadence. Again, it's Tennessee with a 20-7 lead at halftime. The Vols outscored the Crimson Tide 13-0 in the first quarter. Then both sides with seven points in the second quarter. The prescription for success in the second half is presented by Payless Drugs. Payless Drugs is your locally owned family pharmacy with four locations in the Birmingham area. Payless can hand your prescriptions, over-the-counter solutions, and home delivery. Visit MyNewPharmacy.com to pay less. For the Crimson Tide, just limiting the turnovers so far. Tennessee scoring 10 of their 20 points off of turnovers in this game, and obviously the Crimson Tide offense trying to find some rhythm coming up here in the second half. In football, there's always a winner and a loser, but when it comes to Great Southern Barbecue, there's only one winner. Full Moon Barbecue, but one of America's top 10 barbecue joints, and now with 16 locations to serve you. You're listening to the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report. Once again, the score at halftime. It's Tennessee 20 and Alabama 7. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Chevron with Tecron has unbeatable engine cleaning power. And it gives you unbeatable mileage for all kinds of unbeatable destinations. Like time in the sun at the beach. Or time in the sun riding roller coasters. Or a day in the sun hiking mountains. Well, probably just one mountain would be enough for a day, but hiking a mountain is still an unbeatable choice for how to spend time. Download the Chevron app now to get unbeatable mileage at locations near you. At Red Diamond, we know that there's simply nothing better than the perfect sip of fresh brewed iced tea. And we've been working hard to make sure choosing Red Diamond is always easy with only simple ingredients, water, tea leaves, and pure cane sugar, or no sugar. We make sure our tea tastes like, well, tea. Stop by your local cooler and pick up a gallon for a perfect sip today. Red Diamond, perfect, not easy. Crimson Tide football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. They tried to play for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. For many military veteran caregivers, their caregiving journey starts earlier in life and lasts longer. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for a free military veterans guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Don't you wish your life came with a warning app? Stop. That dog does not want to be petted. <laughs> a heads up before something bad happens. You should not send that text. Uh-oh. Life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can reverse pre-diabetes and prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Alabama. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Live from the Learfield Network Studios, this is the College Scoreboard. Good afternoon, my friends, across the great state of Alabama and the southeastern United States. Our time is 425. I'm Brian Houseworth, live with you here in studio. And this is your Alabama Power Scoreboard Update. The latest scores in the SEC and around the nation are presented by Alabama Power, which is power for a better 
Alabama. It has not been a great first half for the Alabama Crimson Tide, ranked number 11 in the land. They trail number 17, Tennessee, at the half. Brian Denny, third Saturday in October, by a score of 20 to 7. Again, we're at the half. We'll have the halftime highlights for you coming up here in a moment. Let's get to our other scores in the SEC. Right now, they're going into the third quarter at Bro Field in Columbia. The teams are on the field, about ready for the second half kickoff right now as I speak. Number 20, Missouri, leading South Carolina 24 uh, to 3 in this ball game. Brady Cook has accounted for two touchdowns. One on the ground, one through the air. Cooper split to the left out of the pistol. Schrader behind Cook in motion. Burden back to the right side. Inside hand off Angley left. Schrader walks into the end zone. To the house and a two touchdown lead. It's Mike Kelly with a call from the Tiger Radio Network from Learfield. Mizzou right now 6-1 playing their best football. The year 2-1 and one only loss was to LSU. They'll get Georgia in two weeks. That game will be, by the way, in Athens. Mississippi State holds on against Arkansas. What an interesting game. I get, did my, got my calculator out here. Mississippi State, folks, won this game with just 205 yards of offense. You almost never see that. They win it by a score of 7-3. to three. Second and goal for the Arkansas 2 in the Case IH red zone. Right, turns, busted play, throws it right flat, marks, turns, reaches for the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Mississippi State. It's Neil Price with a call from the Mississippi State Radio Network in Learfield. Again, State wins it 7-3. Will Rogers had started 38 straight games at quarterback for State. That was the longest active streak at one school in the SEC. That streak ending today as Mike Wright gets the call. They win it. By the way, the Hogs are 0-5 right now in the SEC. That will not go over well. I'm going to tell you that much right now in Fayetteville tonight. Army number 19, LSU tonight, 639. It is homecoming in Baton Rouge. This is only their second meeting, and LSU wearing special uniforms tonight to honor the Army. Their first meeting was back in 1931. Number 13, Ole Miss in Auburn on the Plains. Jordan Hare, that'll be it's uh, 6 tonight. Ole Miss leads the SEC in turnover margin plus 6. That's just incredible. Fewest points, uh, allow- fewest points allowed as well. Pretty impressive and a good job they're doing on special teams. Let's get to our halftime highlights. Quite frankly, I don't have a lot of them for you right now, folks, and they're presented by Hellman's Mayonnaise, the official mayonnaise of Alabama Athletics. In this ball game, Alabama, one half of football, has only had 130 yards of offense. Jalen Milrow, 10 of 14, 117 yards to the air. He does have an Alabama score. Here's the snap. Milrow looks, fires, and it's on. Touchdown, Jermaine Burton. That was a bullet, a 10-yard bullet, and my goodness, did Alabama ever need that. Eli Gold with the call there from Learfield, and he did a great job. Is always also offensively have to mention Will Reichert because he looked good on those kickoffs, but he wasn't able to kick anything. They really didn't give him much of an opportunity. And the other stat that stands out, Alabama folks only rushing for 16 yards. That is their lowest performance of a half that I can recall this year taking my notes uh, now. That's unofficial, but that's going going from memory. I'm very confident in that. Again, Hellman's Mayonnaise, the official mayonnaise of Alabama athletics. In our next segment, we'll come back and I'll have a look at our top 25. I'm Brian Hellsworth, live in studio. This is Alabama football from Learfield. If you're looking for the best selection in Crimson Tide apparel, look no further than the Soup Store. The Soup Store is every Bama fan's ultimate destination. For the hottest gear and accessories with three great locations around campus to serve you, in Tuscaloosa on campus at the University Student Center, on the Strip in front of Bryant Denny Stadium, and on Bryant Drive. If you can't get to Tuscaloosa, shop the Soup Store online at soupstore.ua.edu. The Soup Store is a proud partner of Alabama Athletics. Just like the Crimson Tide, Serve Pro is honored to be the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. With more than 2,000 locations nationwide and over 50 years of experience, Serve Pro is faster to any disaster. To find an Alabama Serve Pro service location near you, simply click on servepro.com. Serve Pro is a proud supporter of Alabama football. Crimson Tide Football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide Football from Learfield. 
Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Hey, so what's a great way to spread awareness that driving high is illegal everywhere? A catchy song, of course. You can run, but you can't drive high. You can run, but you can't drive high. Friendly reminder, don't drive high. If you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Live from the Learfield Network Studios, this is the College Scoreboard. 4.31 is our time. Brian Houseworth back with you here live in the studio. Your scoreboard update brought to you by the great folks at Alabama Power. It is power for a better Alabama at the half right now. Third Saturday in October, 17th ranked Tennessee, leading number 11 Alabama by a score of 22-7. And we salute our radio affiliate of the game, WFFN 95.3 FM, the Bear in Tuscaloosa. Number nine, Oregon, leading Washington State right now, 17-13 at the half. Slugfest in Eugene, very physical game. Bo Nix has a touchdown run. Number three, Ohio State holds on against Penn State today in Columbus as they win it by a score of 20-12. to Marvin Harrison getting it done, 11 catches, 162 yards, and a touchdown. What an amazing season he's had. Ohio State is now 7-0. 22nd ranked Air Force wins over Navy, 17-6. Right now, second quarter late in Houston. Eighth-ranked Texas leading Houston 21-3. Horns 5-1, 2-1 in the Big 12. They beat Alabama. Their one loss, of course, to Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, uh, speaking of them, number six in the land. They hold on in Central Florida 31-29. Take it to the house this season. The Alabama Manufactured Housing Association and Crimson Tide Football. This week's contestant, Chris Freeman from Elmore. If Bama returns here, first received kickoff in the second half for a touchdown during today's game, he'll win $75,000 toward the purchase of a manufactured home from an authorized AMHA dealer. You can find the complete rules at RollTide.com forward slash take it to the house. It is 433. I'm Brian Houseworth live in studio. Coming up next, your second half kick, Eli, Tyler, and Roger. This is Crimson Tide Football from Learfield. Favorite jeans, favorite shirt. I can make a sausage and I'm firing it up, yeah. Everybody knows how to get my grill on. You can smell that flavor up and down the road. It's a little taste of heaven and everybody knows. It's how I get my grill on. Can make a sausage. It's just a little taste of heaven. Do you say roll tide instead of hello? See elephants in the clouds? Never wear blue and orange together? If so, there's no better way to show your Crimson Tide pride than with the University of Alabama Regents Visa Debit Card and prepaid Regents Now Card. As passionate as you are about Bama, Regents is even more passionate about celebrating your every financial win and helping you plan for the next one. To order your card, visit Regents.com slash GoBama. Regents, official bank of the SEC. Member FDIC. Terms, conditions, and fees apply. It's game day. What do you take to the tailgate? A flat screen TV? Take it to the tailgate. Your wife's favorite blender? A DJ sound system? With a Ford F-150 truck, you can take it all. With available Pro Power Onboard that acts like a mobile generator, you can use F-150 to take your tailgate to the next level. Visit your local Ford dealer today. The Alabama Crimson Tide and Ford F-150. Greatness starts here. See owner's manual for important operating instructions. What does commitment sound like? At Alabama Power, we hear you, we see you, and celebrate you on long practice days, game days that bring us together and every day in between. Your commitment to making an impact for the team, for the fans. That inspires us to be at our best for the communities we champion across the state. We're committed to this kind of energy. 
That's power for a better Alabama. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Alabama Crimson Tide. This has been the Full Moon Barbecue Halftime Report. Full Moon Barbecue, the best little pork house in Alabama. Alabama football is also brought to you by Allstate, you're in good hands. Chevron with Tecron. Unbeatable fans deserve unbeatable mileage. Choose Chevron with Tecron. Hellman's, the official mayonnaise of Alabama athletics. And by The Soup Store, your home for officially licensed Bama gear. Now let's go back to the stadium for the call of the second half. Getting ready to start the third quarter of action in Tuscaloosa, it's Tennessee 20 and Alabama 7. The Domino's Drive for Dough is presented by your locally owned and operated Domino's in Tuscaloosa. If Bama scores on the first drive of the second half, Matt Osborne of McDonough, Georgia, will win a gift card for the amount of yards in the scoring drive. Enter to win on the Crimson Tide Sports Network's Facebook page to be the next Domino's Drive for Dough winner. We are live inside the Alabama Credit Union broadcast booth where you can feel good about your money. Once again, on the play-by-play call, here is Eli Gold. Okay, Roger, thank you very much. Tyler Watts, how do you keep your mind straight here and what you can do, what's not working, what is working? What does your mindset have to be to begin the second half here? Well, the complaining and the fussing is for the fans and us up here in the broadcast booth. When you walk in those doors, down that locker room, it's all about what can we adjust, what can we change, how do we get this thing corrected. There were some positive takeaways in, in the first half. Alabama the defense had a couple of drives where we were able to force some three and outs. Offensively, you proved that you could drive the ball. You're able to run the football. So you have to get back down to yourself. The difference in this ball game right now are missed opportunities in scoring when you cross the 50 for the Alabama offense and the two turnovers. Ten points once again on the Alabama turnovers. Got to be able to correct that up and find yourself back in this football game. The next ten minutes is going to be crucial for this football team for Alabama. And Christian will check in with you in a moment here, but it's time for the kickoff as Bama gets the ball to begin the second half. And we are underway. Half number two here in Tuscaloosa. And the ball sails into the end zone over the head of Kendrick Law out of play. Your thoughts on the second half, Christian? Well, Eli, we just got to do a better job on defense of tackling in space and being uh, prepared for this tempo as I walk by the band right now, Eli. Hey, look, we know they're going to go fast. You got to do everything that you can to get back to the football and get in position to go out there and make a play. Right now, it's all about doing what you can, playing your box and dominating your box because guys, it looks like guys are almost just you know, doing their job, but that's not enough. We need guys to get off the blocks and make plays. I see Jaden Roberts is back out there now, Tyler. It's good to see that that injury was short-lived. Yeah. All right, let's see what the Tide can do now. Trailing here, 20-7 to to begin the second half. Milrow on the give. Jace McClellan, he's down the near sideline. He takes off scampering, and he's out across the 45, down to the 43-yard line. A 29-yard run on the first play from scrimmage. Well, that's a good way to start it off, and it was all because of over-pursuit by the Tennessee secondary. Jason McClellan's able to go out the back end and get upfield for a huge game. And the center, Seth McLaughlin, made a nice block on that play as well. Now with two wide outs to the far side, tight end in on the near side. Single setback is McClellan to the left side of the quarterback. Here's the snap. Milrose stands in, loads up long, looking, got him, touchdown! Touchdown, Isaiah Bond, 46 yards. Touchdown, Alabama. Lordy, we needed that. Boy, J.C. Latham there on the right end of that offensive line did an outstanding job against Tyler Barron, one of the leading sack producers for Tennessee. He had his hands full but held up and provided enough time for the post from Isaiah Bond to develop. And Jalen Milrow delivered a strike. Two plays and a touchdown, and just like that, this Alabama crowd is back in the game. And that's the big thing, too, get this crowd back in it. Extra point by Rayford is up and good. 
So we have gone a grand total of 40 some odd seconds here. This first half of play, excuse me, second half of play. And Alabama now on the board again. It is a 20 to 14 ball game. We're back with more in a moment on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. When the game goes into overtime. But the game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. At Cadence Bank, we're here for all four quarters and overtime in your financial journey. Whether you're investing for the future, saving for a dream home, starting a business, or just needing to tackle life's financial challenges, we have the teammates, tools, and game plan to help you win. Experience a financial partner that comes in clutch. Visit CadenceBank.com to learn more. Cadence Bank. Your team, your cadence. Member of FDIC. Having forklift issues? Well, maybe you need a new lift. Maybe you just need your equipment repaired. Trust the experts at the Lilly Company. Lilly is your one-stop shop for material handling and an authorized dealer for the number one forklift in the world, Toyota Forklifts. From new forklifts to everything else in your warehouse, the Lilly Company has over 100 years of experience to take care of your business. Online at lillyforklifts.com, proud partner of the Crimson Tide. Fourteen, nineteen, still to go in this third quarter in the Crimson Tide. Now within six, it's Tennessee 20 and Alabama 14. And again, a huge congratulations to Matt Osborne of McDonough, Georgia, for the Domino's drive for Doe. He'll get a gift card for 75 yards since Alabama scored on this first possession of the third quarter. The Domino's drive for Doe. Third Saturday in October, presented by Coca-Cola. Thank you to Coca-Cola for your support of Alabama athletics. Be sure to grab game day winning taste with Coke Zero Sugar. Taste you can't beat. Cook's best control, sideline reporter Christian Miller. We saw the offense do its job. Now the defense gets back to work. Yep, and Roger, I'm expecting these guys to go. Because look, they went in the halftime. They said, look, we got to adjust. we got to get our mind right. They had some good stops in that first half. Settling for some field. Making Tennessee uh, settle for some field goals. But right now, I want to see the defense respond the way the offense just did. I want to see a three and out. I want to see some fast, physical, physical style of football. And ultimately, the Alabama standard on defense. Here's Will Riker kicking it away to D. Williams. Or excuse me, Cameron Selden, who takes it on the far sideline. And he'll run out across the 20 to the 23-yard line, Selden does. The Bromberg scoring drive, two plays, 75 yards in 41 seconds. And Alabama now within a touchdown. It's 20 to 14. So in the first half, we were almost reluctant to try to apply too much pressure to Joe Milton because of the fear of the run. And that's the exact opposite game plan Tennessee came out with. What adjustments were made at halftime. Yeah. You know, there was a little bit of confusion on this kickoff. The referees were blowing the whistle before the ball carrier was down. I'm not quite sure what happened. That's something you don't see very often either. Seems like it'd be deception still. Yeah. So it's going to be a first and uh, ten. They're moving the chains now and everything. Getting things. The ball is on the four-yard line. First down. They did call it there. So because yeah. the guy called for the fair catch, that... Obviously, we're going to pull up on that, and you cannot advance the ball, even though he did not catch the ball. Yeah. That's something you rarely see. And remember, I said the same thing. I said, you know, I had one guy, and then I said, no, no, it's the other guy, because I saw him signal for the third catch. But whatever, we'll take it. The ball's at the four-yard line now, instead of out near the 25. 
And the officials now come over to the near sideline, the Tennessee sideline, to explain to Josh Heupel exactly what happened. The other After further review, the only field is confirmed. Four-yard line, first down. And the referee goes check in the video, and Ken Williamson says, yep, he called for a fair catch. Three foot, 14 minutes, 19 seconds. On the oh. Even though somebody else made the catch. So they move the clock to 14-19. Jalen Wright is the running back now behind his quarterback Joe Milton the third Bama's defense crawls up Here's the give very little there on the left side for Jalen Wright He'll get across to the six-yard line Boy, Deontay Hall filled the hole hard and forced a little stutter stuff, and then Caleb Downs came down hard, or Jalen Key, rather, and delivered a lick. We're now on the second down play. The give, and Bama swarms through, and Deontay Lawson, who took the Highland route, he was there with Tim Smith backing him up. And he was talking to the guys before this defense came onto the field, getting them fired up about focusing and playing hard. In the first two plays, he has been just a cannonball out there. Tennessee 6 of 11 in third down conversions. Here's a third down and seven. The ball is at the ball's own seven yard line. They've got a long way to go. Bama's defense digs in. Milton in the shotgun. Stands back at the one. Gives it off to the single setback. And he'll get taken down at the 11 yard line. Very little there for Jalen Wright. Tim Smith put him down. Deontay Lawson grabbed him going by. Three plays right there by Deontay Lawson. Trey Amos also in on the dime package coming out of coverage to help assist with the tackle as well. Christian wanted a three and out. This Alabama defense just delivered it. That was a big truck works defensive stop. Now the punter. Out of his own end zone, booms it away. Fair catch, says McKinstry, and it takes a Tennessee roll all the way down to the 30-yard line. But still, good field position, a 58-yard punt, and no return for that punt right there. So Alabama will be going to work first and 10. And Alabama has had the ball already. 41 seconds in this half and scored on a two-play drive. Let's see if they can replicate that here. Well, that would be nice, but I'd also like a little bit of ball control as well. But you loved how they came out pounding it, found an opening hole, and were able to, to get a drive really going. That's got to instill a lot of confidence in this offensive unit. One score down. Roy Dell Williams is the running back to the right side of his quarterback, Milrow. Wide outs either way, tight end on the right side. Now in motion, going to the far side is Vaughn. Here's Milrow, fakes the inside give, rolls right and throws. It's caught by the tight end, Dupree, and DJ Dupree, CJ Dupree gets himself a 16-yard pickup and the first down. So you got the play action on the inside. CJ Dupree drags all the way from the left side of the offensive formation across. Old school football right there. And then lowers his head and picks up a couple of more. So it'll be a first and ten now. Football is at Bama's own 45. Coming off the field is Slaughter. He's walking with the assistance of the official. Danico Slaughter. He was kind of woozy. Gabe Judy Lally comes in to replace him. And now who jumped? Tennessee moved. Someone on the right side there. Lot or Eason. Offside. Defense number 55. It was Omar Norman Lott. Omar Norman Lott jumped and drew Alabama. So it's now a first down and five for the Crimson Tide. Football at midfield and then do it again. Tennessee jumps again. 
J.C. Latham up against the guy who has awesome. been jumping. Awesome. Number 37. And we're going to have a new finish for the last of the year. Five-hour penalty. Where is it? That's going to be another flag on the Volunteers. For the longest time, we had had only one penalty in the whole ball game. Now we've seen a few more here come in rapid succession. First and ten, Alabama from the Volunteer 45. Milrow gets the snap, and that one might be against Alabama. Well, we're almost guaranteed one per game. Aren't Snap we? infraction. Offense number 56. Five yard penalty. I mean, first down. Milrow was walking up and signaling his teammates. Yeah. And I guess that movement had Seth snapping it. Uh, Tennessee's giving us all kinds of different looks. So Jalen goes up to adjust the play, maybe audible. And once again, the ball is inadvertently snapped back. Now with Robbie Oots in motion. It'll be a first and 15. Here's the snap back to Milrow. He waits, he waits, loads up and throws. It is caught at the 30-yard line by Isaiah Bond. What a great throw that one was. Yeah, really nice protection as well. I tell you, these wide receivers for Alabama are really finding some open areas in this zone defense for Tennessee. Burton was open as well as Isaiah Bond. So now a first and ten, Alabama from the Volunteer 30. Bama heading right to left. The field in total shade and shadows now. Here's the throw near side taken there by Roydell Williams, who bobbled the football and never does get going. So we go with our own option attack to try to slow down this defensive front and take advantage of your quarterback being a ball carrier. But as Jalen Miller doesn't do this a lot, you have to attack the outside shoulder of that defender or cut it hard up underneath. He tried to throw the ball over the top, which really delayed the development of that play. Jace McClellan. Ooh. The fans reacting to a late hit by the Tennessee defense. A forearm to the head that goes unpenalized. Here's the snap. McClellan up the middle. Gets to the 25-yard line. Well, now that a play has elapsed, there's nothing they can do about it. But the fans sure as heck reacting. Got to stay aggressive here, but you also have to be smart with the football. Cannot afford to take any sort of negative play. 9.32 to go in the third. Bama trailing 20-14. to 14. Everybody looks to the far sideline. The play is being signaled in. Milrow with eight seconds on the play clock. Brings a man in motion. Gives it to Jace McClellan, and that one goes nowhere. Yeah, that's a frustrating one right there. We yeah. have the numbers to run the ball inside, and we just got beat across the face, I think, of our right side. They did a little twist and ran right into Jace McClellan. So it's going to be time for Will Reichard to step in. It'll be a 42-yard field goal attempt for Will between the hash marks kicking it to our left there is no wind as a factor here kick is on the way it is up and it is good so a 42 yard field goal by will reichard draws alabama even closer it's tennessee 20 alabama 17 here on the crimson tide sports network from learfield what does commitment sound like? At Alabama Power, we hear you, we see you, and celebrate you on long practice days, game days that bring us together, and every day in between. Your commitment to making an impact for the team, for the fans, that inspires us to be at our best for the communities we champion across the state. We're committed to this kind of energy. That's power for a better Alabama. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Alabama Crimson Tide. 
Crimson Tide Football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide Football from Learfield. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends, surprise parties, camps, birthdays. The same way you plan for the important moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. My name is Teresa Barber. I was in the United States Navy, and I served overseas in the Middle East and Africa. Early on in my career, I had a commander that taught our suicide prevention training, and the very next day, he took his own life. 90% of suicide attempts involving a gun are fatal. My way of continuing my service is to help protect my community by being a responsible gun owner and by storing firearms safely. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. Brought to you by N Family Fire and the Ad Council. Eight thirty-three left to go in this third quarter. It's now Tennessee 20 and Alabama 17. Our radio affiliate of the game is WFFN 95.3 FM. The Bear in Tuscaloosa. Follow the Crimson Tide Sports Network on Facebook. Tell us where you're listening from for a chance to win two free meals from Jack's. Huge thank you to WFFN 95.3 FM. The Bear in Tuscaloosa for carrying Alabama football this season. Roger, thank you. The Bromberg scoring drive was six plays, 46 yards in three minutes and 58 seconds. And Alabama now to within three. It's 20 to 17 as Reichard booms this one away. And the fair catch is signaled and the catch is made by the same man, Cameron Sheldon. He's got a weak fair catch. It's almost like he's yeah. signaling the runner to go around third and score. Exactly, yeah. But this time, he got it right. Thoughts, question? Well, Eli, we've got a lot more energy on the sideline now, and rightfully so. Guys are starting to get fired up. This defense seems like they're tasting a little bit of blood after that, that uh, big three and out. So I'll be honest, I'm expecting some big things. I feel like we're due for a turnover here, honestly, on defense. We'll see if we can come up with one. Something else, we've got Amos in. Terry and Arnold is actually not on the field. Yeah. Let's see, Tennessee going to work first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Milton looks right, looks left, looking down. Sack number one. Sack number one. Braswell made that call. And Christian, you have an update on Terry and Arnold? I do. Terry and Arnold is being evaluated for an upper body injury in the locker room, and I'll give you an update when I get a chance. Okay, here now a quick throw near side. And Milton released it quickly and took off. And they finally chased him down as he got off of around the 41-yard line. Well, they'll say he stepped out about the 38. So that's where Tennessee is going to have it right here with a first and 10 from the 38-yard line. Milton looks right, looks left, looks long, and it's overthrown, incomplete, down at the 11-yard line. And there's an injured player for Tennessee now. One of the injured Tennessee Vols gets himself up and begins to hobble away as the trainers get out there to see him. That's going to be Gerald Mincy, the second string left tackle. John Campbell Jr., does a lot of the playing at left tackle. He and Mincy uh, shifting around. And uh, Mincy is back up, but is obviously in pain. Roger? Yeah, a moment ago we saw Braswell sack for the Crimson Tide, so that was the 27th sack of the year for Alabama Band. The sack count is presented by Guthrie's Golden Fried Chicken Fingers, an Alabama tailgate tradition, and now an official partner of the Crimson Tide. Get a sack for Guthrie's. Sounds like a great idea. Well, we're doing a much better job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Tennessee has not been able to get much of a running game going outside of Joe Milton on that little quarterback keeper. Now, let's see what Bama does here. 
Jalen Key in motion, creeps up. Dylan Sampson is the running back. He gets the shovel pass in the middle and is gobbled up by men in crimson. That'll get him back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing further. Great job by the Bama D. Keenan was the first guy and a host of others. Yeah, Keenan was the one that had a blocker on him and reached out with his right hand and got enough of the guy's jersey to be able to slow him down. Now we got a third and long and another opportunity to get off the field. Tennessee 6 of 12 in third down conversions today. Here's a third and nine from their own 39. 7-10 to go in the third. Looking either way, the quarterback throws. It's bobbled and then caught, held on to by Keaton, and it's going to be short of a first down. He's about a yard short. Yeah. This is awfully close, and the, this half has not started good for Josh Heupel. He's considering going for it, even though he's on his side of the 50. Of course, the quarterback, Joe Milton, can run. They've got Dylan Sampson in there. He can run. Everybody from Tennessee huddling up together. In tight. Shotgun snap. Give to Sampson. He's not no, going to get there. Not even close. That was Jihad Campbell. Jihad Campbell. The New Jersey native just grabbed him as he went by and threw him right down to the turf and for the second time today tennessee gambles going on it for on fourth and short and this alabama defensive front is able to penetrate and get the turnover wow we've got timeout so the fans can celebrate and because we need to take a moment right here so we can pay tom stipe's salary let's break for these messages alabama with the ball and they are down by three on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still in the air. Mm. Best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. Crimson Tide Football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide Football from Learfield. This message is for Karina. Our mom will finish her high school diploma at age 28. Hi, Mom. It's Emmeth and Nicholas. Congratulations on getting your diploma. You work so hard and have taught us so much. We love you. When you graduate, they graduate. Finish your high school diploma for you and for them. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. And here's Heather with the weather. Well, it's beautiful out there, sunny and 75, almost a little chilly in the shade. Now, let's get a read on the inside of your car. It is hot. You've only been parked a short time, and it's already 99 degrees in there. Let's not leave children in the back seat while running errands. It only takes a few minutes for their body temperatures to rise, and that could be fatal. Cars get hot fast and can be deadly. Never leave a child in a car. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Back. 624 left to go in this loud Bryant Denny Stadium in the third quarter. Tennessee 20, Alabama 17. We just saw a big time stop by Bama, presented by Truckworks, the official commercial truck dealer of the Crimson Tide. 13 locations across the southeast. Keep your business rolling. Now it's the offense with its turn to roll. Danico Slaughter, the uh, standout cornerback for Tennessee, is back out there. He was banged up earlier, but he is now on the field as Alabama with 6.24 to go in the fir third quarter. Gets the ball. Here's the handoff. Looking for running room is Jace McClellan, and he'll pick up seven and a half, maybe eight yards behind Robbie Oots and Caden Proctor. And it brings up a second down. It'll be a second down and seven for the Crimson Tide. Well, really nice patience also by McClellan as he allowed the hole to develop and then had a burst to get up there for a gain of seven. 20 to 17, Tennessee on top. They have led all day. Near side, Nye Black, the tight end in motion. 
Here's the snap. No roll. Chased from the pocket. Flush to the right. Squares up as though to throw and then tosses it out of bounds. No harm, no foul. And, and that's one of the plays where once he breaks containment, just go ahead and take what the defense is giving you. They're, they're, they're allowing you to run the ball for the first time. But he keeps looking downfield, hoping to make a play instead of using that speed to pick up what he could. Bama, two of seven in third down conversions. Looking at a third and three now. Football is at the Tennessee 40. Bama in the crimson jerseys over the white pants. Tennessee in the white jerseys over the white pants trimmed in orange now in motion here's Milrow has protection he throws across the middle it is caught and held on to magnificently by Jermaine Burton how he caught it I don't know how he held on to it I still don't know that's why Alabama is thrilled to have him in a 23-yard pickup on the play. He could have hit C.J. Dupree. He could have hit Jace McCullen for easy first downs. But he chose the most difficult one down the field, which was an outstanding throw. Yeah. But, man, what concentration by Jermaine Burton. Now Jace McClellan in the lineup. He's lined up to the right side of Milrow. After that bank first, first down, Bama's in the Chick-fil-A red zone. Milrow on the play action keeper. He'll run angling to the far sideline, and he'll step out of bounds in the vicinity of the six-yard line. Amari Nyblack and Malik Benson threw some nice blocks on the far side to spring him. It's not the first time Alabama has tried to get Jalen Milrow to the edge. just the first time that he has really had an opportunity for a crease to be able to use that speed and pick up the yardage. So it's going to be a first and goal from the five-yard line, they'll say officially. Tennessee has one of their players coming off the field, walking a little tentatively. Here comes Alabama now on the give. Far side, cutting it up the field and taking it in. Jace McClellan, touchdown Alabama. Give a big thank you to Malik Benson, who threw a wonderful box. But Chase McClellan gets the touchdown, and for the first time today, Bama is in the lead. Well, the ball, like Tennessee so many times, was intended to go off tackle, but because of the pressure, Tennessee caving down. Jace McClellan was able to bounce it to the edge, and as you mentioned, Malik Benson and C.J. Dupree doing a good job on the edge of spring them loose. Now, Will Reichard to try the extra point. It is up. It is good, and Alabama now leads 24 to 20. Alabama 24, Tennessee 20. First time the Crimson Tide has led on this third Saturday of October. We're back with more in a moment on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of Alabama Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Crimson Tide Football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide Football from Learfield. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Came to the building for the first time after the shooting. It was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how 
at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. 3.42 left to go in the third quarter. Alabama in front, 24-20 against Tennessee. That five-yard rushing touchdown by Jason McClellan. The first rushing touchdown day for Alabama. So you score a free donut with a purchase of a beverage from Duncan. Bama runs on Duncan. Let's head back to the sidelines to our Chris Pest Control sideline reporter, Christian Miller. Unfortunately, Roger, Terry on Arnold just walked uh, right by me. He's returned from the locker room in street clothes, so he will not be returning to this game today. That's unfortunate. He's played so well this year. Yeah, he has had a good season, and, uh, but I've been very impressed. And fortunately, Trey Amos has had a couple of snaps as he plays a lot of the dime package. Here's the kickoff into the end zone. Another touchback. The Bromberg scoring drive for Alabama. Five plays, 47 yards in two minutes and 42 seconds. Now to keep this up. Yes, absolutely. Defense playing outstanding on the opening two drives of the second half, but you have to maintain that focus and discipline. They are getting a, they're aggressive up front, getting after this offensive line for Tennessee. That's really where the difference has been made, and you've had solid coverage in the secondary. Jabari Small is in as the running back now. He's alongside Joe Milton the third, the quarterback. From the 25-yard line, first and ten. Quick throw near side, catch out of the backfield. It's made, and there's a flag on the play after Squirrel White got tripped up by the Alabama defense. We'll see what the officials say here. Deontay on. Lawson says it's against Tennessee. Of course, Deontay's wearing crimson, not stripes, but nevertheless. Holding on the offense number 87. But he knew exactly what was going on. So the fourth penalty of the day on the Volunteers. What you can't do right here, though, is, is get ten of it right back. Yeah. First down and 20. Football is at Tennessee's own 15. 3.24 to go in the third. Snapping it off the near hash mark going left to right. Milton pumps, pulls it down, unloads it, and down he goes. Squirrel right, hit by Dallas Turner and others on the receiving end of that play right there. Yeah, Dallas Turner. Yeah, right before the snap, Dallas went out, vacated, and got outside of the slot receiver, and then took a step or two back. They thought, Tennessee thought that they had the screen set up, but he was shot out of there and made the tackle for another loss. Now a second down and 21. Football is at Tennessee's own 14. 2.47 to go in the third. Alabama. 24 to 20 over the Volunteers. Jalen Wright, the running back, he gets the handoff, goes right up the middle into the gut of that big Alabama defense. Deontay Lawson and Dallas Turner made the tackle, and Justin Avoidby threw his arms in the air in celebration. As we have a little pushing and shoving now, but the officials step in. Jaheim Otis and a few others were uh, pushing there. Yeah, you got them back third and long. Just make the play out here. Stop worrying about running your mouth. Third down and 18. 205 time remaining. Third quarter. Bama leads it. First time today. Here's Milton. Has tons of time, but then everything breaks down. He rolls left, finds a man, sends it over to Jacob Warren, the tight end, and he gets run out of bounds short of the first down. He needed to get to the 37, and Jihad Campbell ran him out at the 34-yard line. Good pressure once again with just a four-man rush by the Alabama front. And Deontay Lawson, once Milton broke containment, was able to come up and force him to dump the ball off. Campbell, he has had an outstanding game. Getting his start here, this start here today, makes a nice open field tackle. So now it's time to punt it away. Be the fourth punt of the afternoon for the Vols and the Australian. Jackson Ross boots it away. Kool Aid McKinstry makes the play and is taken down almost instantly back at the 11 yard line. It'll be a 49 yard punt and no return. Don't forget, folks, no football for Bama next week. Next week is an off weekend. 
will rejoin you from here in Tuscaloosa two weeks from today. Don't know the game time yet, but I'm guessing it's going to be uh, a national telecast on either CBS or something like that, and uh, we'll all find out together. But uh, Bama and LSU two weeks from today. And we'll all learn the start time tomorrow or Monday. So keep it tuned to this Crimson Tide Sports Network station for all the details. First and ten now. Bama with a handoff. And that was Roy Dell Williams who finds running room. Boy, Robbie Oots made an outstanding block out yes. there on the edge. Roy Dell allowed for him to set his defender up, and then he kind of just went in there and absolutely knocked that linebacker backwards. And Kobe Prentice, he was running all over the place as the clock wound down. 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second down and five, Alabama from their own 17-yard line. The Tide's on top for the first time today. Prentice in motion. Here's the give, and Roydell Williams spins backwards and gets to the 20 in the grasp of Tyler Barron, the defensive end who stayed home on that play for Tennessee. Sets up a third short, and I'd be awful surprised. Alabama will not snap the ball before the end of the quarter here. So you won this quarter. You absolutely dominated. Now you've got to maintain that focus. Exactly. Carry it over. Clock winding down, triple zeros on the board, and we go to the fourth quarter. It's Alabama with a lead of 24 to 20, the first time they have led all day long. We're back after this on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Some people just know the perfect time to hit the concession stand. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. I never miss a touchdown. Want a bite? Yeah, he knows he's got a sixth sense for a snack break. Just like he knows that switching to Allstate can save drivers $468. Saving $468 based on the national average annual savings for new auto customers surveyed in 2022 who switched to Allstate. Prices may vary based on how you buy. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates Northbrook, Illinois. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies because feeling full can sound like this. How did the interview go? I did it. I got the job. I can't believe it. And like this. Mom, I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. And your scores are brought to you live this afternoon by the folks at Alabama Power. It's 518. I'm Brian House with number 20, Missouri, leading South Carolina right now. Throw Field, Columbia, 27-9. That game for the Mayor's Cup. 13th-ranked Ole Miss and Auburn, 6 o'clock. They're about 42 minutes away from kicking it off. And a big matchup right now uh, out west. It's number 9, Oregon, leading Washington State by a score of 31 to 16 that game is now in the fourth quarter let's send you back right now to brian denny stadium in tuscaloosa take it away roger thank you so much brian the third quarter recap is presented by knox pest control just like the side on the field the knox pest control experts respond to you with speed defend your home and business from unwanted pest with knox pest control call 877 knox pest or visit knoxpest.com knox knocks them out and the crimson tide with 17 points in the third quarter tennessee none a 17 nothing third quarter for the crimson side again outscoring the volunteers 17 zilch in that third period of play 
Today's game is presented by Coca-Cola. Thank you to Coca-Cola for your support of Alabama Athletics. Be sure to grab game day winning taste with Coke Zero Sugar. Taste you can't beat. We continue live inside the Alabama Credit Union broadcast booth. Again, Alabama Credit Union, feel good about your money. And once again, with the call, here's Eli Gold. Roger, thank you. Alabama has 304 total yards to Tennessee's 322. Bama has 220 yards on the ground, 100 and, excuse me, 220 through the air, and 84 on the ground. Tennessee, 197 through the air and 125 on the ground. Jalen Milrow, 14 of 19, 220 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Jace McClellan is in it, running back for the tie. Beginning the fourth quarter with a third down and two. A huge play right here to begin the fourth quarter of play. There's the toss from Milrow to Jace. He cuts inside of one man, outside of another man, and he'll stay in bounds, and they'll give him the first down. He's across the 25 to the 26-yard line. J.C. Latham and others with blocks. Yeah, Jermaine Burton came in. Robert Utes had a, a pivotal block there on the edge as well. Jermaine Burton was very slow getting up, and he's actually going to check out. But he is running off the field to the sideline to catch his breath. Here goes Robbie Utes over to the far sideline as well. Isaiah Bond will check in. And to the near side, Amari Nyblak comes to the near side of the formation. On a first and ten, here's the keeper by Nolro. He goes outside, turns it upfield, and gets no more yardage. He got back to the line of scrimmage and elected to take it upfield. And now they're going to say he gets enough. I correct myself. They didn't give it to him last time. He got the first down right here. So Tennessee came in with another safety pressure, and, and Jalen Milro read that, and he's able to pull it out the backside, and there's no run support for Tennessee. He took full advantage of that. So first and 10, football at the 35-yard line. Milro standing back at the 30 in the shotgun. McClellan vacates. Milro looks, looks, throws it across the middle. A high riser past Amari Nyblak, incomplete. Nyblak at 6'4", 233. And that one just kind of sailed on Milro. Would have had to have been a perfect throw, though. And, and so many routes are open up underneath. And Jalen, I hope that just don't try to force that ball downfield, especially as, as productive as we are on the ground here. We need to be in second and short, third and short situations. 13-36 to go in the ball game. Alabama leads 24-20. Third Saturday of October. Defense comes up. Then they'll back away. Wesley Walker moves back into the formation. Here now the snap. It goes to Mulro. Quick give. Jace McClellan. Nothing on the left side. Nothing there. Yeah, I think it was Beasley for Tennessee who shot the gap coming from that middle linebacker position and everything was forced to the perimeter. That's Aaron Beasley. We're very fortunate just to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So now it's going to be a third down and 10. Bama four of eight in third down conversions. Football is at their own 35. The underneath stuff is there and it can be called in advance for a first down. Don't force the ball downfield. Bama needs 10 yards here. The snap, Milrow stands in, flushed. He's going to run. He's going to make the move. He's going to get a first down across the 45. He gave a little head fake at around the 27, and that kept Caleb Perry at bay and a chance to pick up the first down. They had a great job of not forcing the ball and taking what the defense gave you. Now, unfortunately, don't take on three defenders, though. We need you healthy out yeah. here. So it's a first and ten, Bama. 12-21 to go. Fourth quarter, Jace McClellan, the running back. Low snap, picked up off the top of his shoelaces by Milrow, and that was it. He was lucky to get it and hand it off. Aaron Beasley, the weak side linebacker, was uh, able to uh, make the play. Yeah, and this Tennessee defense is kind of starting to get their hands on their, their hips a little bit as we've really been able to establish the line of scrimmage and run the ball. Alabama 24, Tennessee 20. 
Here's a second and nine for the Crimson Tide. From the 49, their own. Jace head fakes. Gets around the left side. Gets to the sideline. And he picks up a first down. A great job there again by Jace McClellan. Brandon Turnage, the former Crimson Tider, was there. He's playing the star linebacker spot. And he just throws him in position. And that got him the sideline. And what got him there was Jaden Roberts pulling around and was able to seal the edge and allow him to bounce it to the outside. And now Alabama's going to take a little time. They're going to use a lot of clock as best they can. On a first and ten. Football at the 37 of Tennessee. The give. McClellan. He'll get a yard to the 36. I'll tell you, Chase has had himself a good day today. 19 carries. That was 100 yards for him right there, along with his touchdown. Now he leaves. Roy Dell Williams checks in. Roy Dell has five carries to Jace's 20. Roy Dell has 15 yards today in the running back spot. Here's Isaiah Bond in motion towards the formation. And looking the other way is Milrow, who misconnects with Burton and misses him as it fail, uh, sails into the sideline at about the 23-yard line. So it's now going to be a third down and nine for the Crimson Tide. Bama 50% in third down conversions, five of ten. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Milrow gets the snap. Defense holds everybody off, and again the throw, and there's a flag on the play. I was afraid there was going to be a flag at the line of scrimmage for holding, but here Gabe Judy Lally might have gotten a piece of the Bama receiver. I'm not exactly sure. Hard to pass, holding, defense number one. exactly what happened. He grabbed Jersey and Gabe Judy Lally is guilty of the penalty. Yeah, and I'm, I'm honestly not sure that we would have caught that ball. It sailed high on Jalen Milrow, which I was a little frustrated with. But we'll take it any way we can get. This drive continues. Now, I know we were only picking up one or two yards on first down, but I love the way we were pounding the ball yep. and wearing down this defense and eating up that clock. Well within field goal range now. That was the sixth penalty of the day on Tennessee. Here's Robbie Uch, the fullback and slash tight end or H-back. He goes in motion. Here's the give. And now looking for running room was Roy Dell Williams. And he'll get from the 24 up to the 20-yard line. Tyler Booker, the left guard, led the blocking that time. And with 10.03 to go on the ball game, Alabama trying to use clock and hang on to their lead of 24-20. We're doing a really good job of compressing everything and then getting to the edge or spreading them out and then running the ball up the middle. Now Jace McClellan back in, working off the far hash mark. Motion from the far side. The give to Jace, and he gets nothing. Still sitting at 100 yards for the day. The man they call Big O, Omari Thomas. The defensive tackle shot through the gap to make the tackle for Tennessee. This is when Alabama will come back to. Snap was a little bad, but Jaden Roberts just got beat across his face, and that play never had an opportunity to develop. Got to be smart here with the ball. 9-16 to go in the fourth quarter. A third and 12 facing the Crimson Tide now. Alabama leads 24-20. Play clock down to eight, seven. In motion, Nye Black, the tight end, comes towards the formation. Look out on the blind side, and down goes Milrow. Down goes Milrow. That was Joshua Josephs who came in untouched to record the fourth sack of the day for Tennessee. That's the second time Tennessee has brought pressure off of the left side. They're pinning Caden Proctor down. He's not kicking out to pick up that fourth defender because you have Amari Nyblack who is releasing free. And now a 50-yard field goal try for Will Reichard. He is one of one from this distance this year. He had that 51-yarder against Texas. 
Here's the kick. Plenty of leg. On the way. It is good. It is good. A 50-yard field goal by a man who continues to close in on the all-time NCAA scoring record. He's within shouting distance now as he takes Alabama to a 27-20 lead with 8-17 to go in the ballgame. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Bama fans, since college football is officially back, Dos Equis wants you to experience this season with a real one. So head to DosEquisSweeps.com and enter for a chance to win game tickets, hospitality passes, and pregame sideline passes for two to the Alabama football game versus LSU on November 4th. Raise one with a real one. Dos Equis, served where the tide rolls and proud partner of the Crimson Tide Radio Network. 21 plus, enjoy Dos Equis responsibly, imported by Cervezas Mexicanas, White Plains, New York, copyright 2023. The Crimson Tide plays here. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. 1225 is your ultimate game day destination. Catch the game on one of their 35 big screen high def TVs. Combined with an extensive menu of mouth watering food and refreshing drinks. Juicy burgers, crispy wings, craft beers, signature cocktails. 1225 where the energy is high, the screens are massive, and the excitement is contagious. Visit 1225 on the strip in Tuscaloosa. Less than two blocks from Brian Denny Stadium. 1225 Sports Bar where sports, food, and fun collide. I was 38 and expecting my first baby. The pregnancy was high risk due to my age, so I required constant monitoring. My nurse Hannah was so compassionate. She answered all of my questions and took care of every need. At one point, my blood pressure dropped. Hannah kept me calm and called in help. Thankfully, all went well with the delivery, and now I have a beautiful baby girl. At the DCH Women's Pavilion, you can tell they love bringing babies into the world. DCH, champions for your health. 17 left to go in this game. It's now Alabama 27 and Tennessee 20. The attendance figures are courtesy of ATIX. The official attendance for today's game a sellout. 100,000 fans and 77 as well. So 177 is the official total. ATIX, proud sponsor of the game's attendance. ATIX says thank you to all ticket holding Crimson Tide fans. Christian Miller, what's going to happen here for this Alabama defense? Well, I definitely think we need a, a turnover if we can to keep that momentum going or a big stop. I just saw Coach Saban walk down to the defensive line unit and just tell them, hey, we got to get going here. We need you guys right here because this is going to be a huge drive for this defense right now. So we've gotten ourselves a kickoff that goes into the end zone to our right. And Alabama keeps Tennessee bottled up just a bit. We've seen some in, uh, interceptions here today which means money for the picks for kids um, deal. We had the one, well, none by Alabama, one by uh, Tennessee on that deflection in the end zone. Here's Dylan Sampson. Good tackle. Jihad Campbell, nice, nice tackle. tackle. Jihad is taking advantage of Trez Marshall's absence today to establish himself as a guy worthy of a good bit of playing time. Here now is second down and six. Quick release, right side, Tennessee. They've got themselves a first down run as they scamper up the right side. Dylan Sampson came out of the backfield. 7.41 to go in the fourth quarter. Alabama now watching as the quarterback, Milton, stands in. The ball is not free. It's picked up by Alabama and rumbling in for the touchdown is the Crimson Tide's Jihad Campbell. We have just spoken about him taking advantage of playing time, and he gets the loose football that takes it on in. I'm not sure if Chris Braswell was the guy who knocked it loose, but it looked like it. And the ball came free, and Jihad Campbell takes it in. Ah, 
the third Saturday of October. Starting to feel like the good old days. Woo, that felt great right there. And you know who's not going to get mentioned, but I'm going to mention his name, is Trey Amos. He was the cornerback in coverage. Milton wanted to pull the ball back and throw that little 8-10 yard stop on the edge as he has done all day long. But Trey Amos did not bite. He didn't give too much cushion. He was coming up. Milton had nowhere to go with the ball. Extra point try by Will Reichard. On the way, it is up, and it is good. And all of a sudden, what had been a 13-0 lead for Tennessee, and what was a 20-7 to Tennessee lead at intermission, is now Alabama 34, Tennessee 20. Here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. When the game goes into overtime. But. The game goes into overtime. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink. Easy to enjoy. Order Bud Light online today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. This is Crimson and White Country. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. Learning the Lingo. GOAT. G-O-A-T. Acronym. Stands for Greatest of All Time. As in spaghetti sandwiches for dinner? They're my fave. Dad. You're the GOAT. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Playing Dixieland Delight with 7.26 to go. It's Alabama 34, Tennessee 20. We just saw that touchdown by the Crimson Tide. The best move of the game presented by Old Dominion. Freight line. Old Dominion works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Boy, Alabama defense has been so dominant. Christian, you got to let me know, how good does that feel to be in your opponent's head? Oh, there's no better feeling. I just was down here talking about how great it feels when you've got 100,000 people cheering when you make a big play, and there hasn't been a play bigger than that one right there. And then we were just well did a phenomenal job making that sack right there, knocking the ball loose to Hot Campbell, picking it up for a touchdown. It doesn't get any better than that. And that's just a truly a gut punch to that Tennessee offense right now. Sure was. And the kickoff is another touchback. And we were just talking about Jahad Campbell and how he's taken advantage of the playing time. And son of a gun, if the guy from New Jersey doesn't come up large again. And we'll never know that. You'll never know this, and I won't either, but how difficult it is to keep that focus. That ball's sitting there waiting on you, and you still have to secure it in your hands, and most guys will just start running without securing it first. Yeah. Of course, the Bromberg scoring drive was just that one play for Alabama after Tennessee had gone three plays for negative one yard, and then the Tide took over on the uh, turnover. Here now is Joe Milton the third gets the snap, fakes the give, and then hands it off, and nowhere to go for anybody. Justin Aboigby is right there to slow things down. Again, Milton under pressure, rolls right. Hit as he throws and tosses that one away all the way downfield at the 25-yard line. Boy, and he's lucky he did. Tim Keenan and Deontay Lawson were pursuing him, and he was about to take a big hit. Just had to get rid of it, threw it to a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. But very fortunate, that ball was five yards, ten yards out of bounds. Tennessee, six of 14 in third down conversions today. Here's a third and nine, football at their own 26. Seven minutes to go on the ball game. Bama 
trying to put Tennessee back in their place. Here now the snap, dropping back and looking. Milton throws near side, high, wide, and gone. He was looking for Jacob Warren, who stands 6'6", 253. He could have been throwing to Manute Bowl, Malachi, and he wouldn't have made the catch. Yeah, Malachi Moore in good coverage there. Would have had to been a great, a great throw. But I tell you, Alabama only had a three-man rush right there, almost spying two guys and, and finding that hole and then filling them up. Not going to allow Joe Mutton to, Milton to escape once again for the first down. Averaging 48 yards a punt is Jackson Ross for Tennessee. And he'll boom this one. Fair catch being indicated. And Kool-Aid lets it go by. It rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. And it is stopped at the one-yard line. Great coverage by the Volunteers. They chased it down. It was a 73 and three-quarter yard punt. 73 and three-quarter yards. That's how far it stopped, shy of the touchback. We've got timeouts. 6.48 to go in the ball game. Alabama on top, 34 to 20. Here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. What widens the eyes? Tightens the stomach and flutters the heart. Adrenaline. Feel it for yourself in the Toyota RAV4, Camry, Corolla, and Tacoma. Get 2.9% APR for 36 months on a new 2023 Toyota RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid through October 31st, 2023. Zero down for well qualified buyers with approved credit and financing through Southeast Toyota Finance. 2904 monthly payment for $1,000 finance. Excludes tax tag, registration title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. When the unexpected happens in business, your insurance coverage is the real MVP. Your local agent and their partner, Frank and Muth Insurance, are true team players. We provide unique coverage to tackle risk head on so you can stay in the game. Let's get frank about your business insurance. To find a local agent today, visit Frank and Muth Insurance at www.fmins.com. That's www.fmins.com. Hey, Crimson Tide fans, it's tough to win without teamwork. And Rocket Homes and Rocket Mortgage are a championship team. Buy with Rocket Homes and finance with Rocket Mortgage, and you could get up to $10,000 toward closing from Rocket Mortgage. Now that's what I call teamwork. Yeah. It's like having a great coaching quarterback duo on your team. Visit onlywithrocket.com today. Rocket Mortgage, proud mortgage partner of Alabama Athletics. For purchase transaction only, call 1-8337-ROCKET for conditions and restrictions. Equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, and MLS consumer access.org, number 3030. Six forty-six still to go. It is Alabama thirty-four and Tennessee twenty. Stay tuned after the ball game for the region's fifth quarter show and the post-game press conference with head coach Nick Saban. It is brought to you by Tri Green Equipment, your John Deere dealer, North Alabama and Middle Tennessee. Now somebody touched the football for Tennessee before it got to the goal line, so the the ball has been reset to the three. Not a huge difference, but it's two yards. It's two yards instead of having it inside the one Bama's going to have the ball from their own three yard line as the officials reviewed things while uh, you were away on that commercial message here now is Milrow under center handoff left side and oh McClellan almost broke free but they hauled him down that was Wesley Walker who got him around the ankles you know he did almost break free but that's awfully scary to be able to bounce, to bounce it out down here everything typically is north and south as you're just trying to give yourself a little more breathing room 625 to go in the ball game I almost wish we'd stay underneath center and just quarterback sneak it I think Tennessee I think Jalen Milrow could pick up about four or five yards if we did Maybe so. Let's see what happens. 34-20, Alabama. 6.08 to go in the ballgame. Man in motion goes to the far side. Here's the give to the running back. And Jace gets back to the five, maybe the six-yard line. Arian Carter came up to make the tackle. Carter from Smyrna, Tennessee. Bama 5 of 11. In third down conversions today. Obviously, we're going to milk the clock down and yes. run the ball once again. If we get it. 
Bama with 345 total yards. Tennessee with 322 on a third and seven. Football is at the six-yard line. Here's the give. Is there running room? Yes, there is, but not enough for the first down. As shooting his way through to the left side was Jace McClellan, but he got tripped up about a yard shy of the first down yardage. Oh, awfully close, though. Heck of an effort for Jace to get as close as he did. I thought he felt when he fell forward. It's a good spot, though. I mean, he was awfully close to picking up the yardage needed. But Alabama now, by virtue of that last scoop and score, now with a 34-20 lead over the Tennessee Volunteers. It's going to be a fourth down and a yard here. And Omari Thomas banged up for the Tennessee Volunteers. Crowd's upset. The crowd doesn't you know, like it. They don't like the stoppage. Yeah. Might have cost us a second or two, but it will crank back up once they cart him off the field. Yeah. Don't know if he flopped or not, but he does get that, and we have a timeout here in Tuscaloosa. Let's keep it right here and uh, talk about th this uh, broadcast. You know, you think back to all the greats who have played in this game, and there have been so many. One of them, among many, who have gone on to win a Super Bowl is Reggie Ragland, late of the Kansas City Chiefs. And I see him on the sideline there with Christian Miller. Christian. Reggie, I'm here. The former Alabama linebacker and Super Bowl champion, Reggie Ragland. How impressive has his defense been in the second half? Oh, man. Um... They've been doing the little things right. Just like, you know, when we played together and uh, the defense that we had here at Alabama, they've always done the little things right. And when you do the little things right, you can make the big things look easy. So they're doing what they're supposed to do. Had the right leverage on the coverage. They're executing the calls. And you're making the plays when they present themselves. You can't go out there and just try to make a play. You got to make the play when it presents itself, and that's what those guys are doing right now. No doubt. Appreciate you, Reggie. Hey, Christian, did you know when he was here, how good Reggie could be and how long he would play in the NFL? Oh, no doubt. You know, Eli, he was a phenomenal leader for us. He always played hard. He practiced hard. And he was a guy that I looked up to. He always uh, would take younger guys under his wing. He was a guy that had to wait his turn a little bit. He followed behind uh, some really good players as well. So I did. I was not surprised by his success in the National Football League. And it's always so special being able to come back and see these guys around here in the program because it truly is a brotherhood when you play uh, under Coach Saban here at Alabama. So we, we always keep up with each other. Everybody's still tight. So it's, it's great getting to catch up with these guys. You know who else? was here the other day uh, we visited with him uh, after the show but at Thursday night's Nick Saban show Peter Kim was here oh. the great place kicker from the 80s 80 81 82 uh, lives in Hawaii and uh, is a noted uh, restaurateur mm -hmm. out on the islands and uh, looked up and there he was and I didn't even know it but the coach said yeah he was at uh, he was at practice our offense is on the field yeah This would be uh, quite the call if Alabama stays with an offense here. It's fourth and a yard. They may be trying to draw Tennessee off, which uh, is always a possibility. Milro has Jace, excuse me, Roy Dell Williams in the uh, pistol formation. Four and a half to go in the game. Nope, nobody jumped. There were a little twitches. Now Milro comes underneath center. Yeah, we're just drawing him. Yeah, we're just going to try and draw him off here. The tall sweep right would score a touchdown. Yeah. Milro still under center. He got a timeout. And that's going to bring about a timeout. Hey, why not? Why not try, right? You One never day. know. This yeah. has been a rattled Tennessee. First time out of half, Alabama. Rattled Tennessee football team and has made a lot out. of mistakes. So why not try to tempt them to make one more? Yeah. If we see Burnett punt, 
He'll be punting with an average of 42 yards per kick today. Yeah, and that's a good, and we talked about that in the pregame, about how he potentially could be a difference maker. It really hasn't panned out, although this is a golden opportunity for him to flip the field yeah. as Tennessee was just able to. He gets them backed up around the 20-yard line, the 15-yard line. What a heck of a punt that would be. Oh, gosh, yeah. Burnip came into the ball game averaging 48.9 yards per punt on the season. He got 49.9 yards per average last week. But, you know, the most important thing right here with four minutes to go is Tennessee may gamble and try to block this sucker. So you've got to make sure that you're solid up front and you're, first of all, getting the kick off. You cannot afford to have a block kick right here. Time is really becoming a concern for Tennessee. Here comes the Crimson Tide off the far hash mark. D. Williams goes back deep for the Volunteers, standing at his own 38-yard line. The kick will be going left to right as you listen in. Either somebody didn't shower today or someone is already lighting up a cigar, but you don't want to do that prematurely. Here's the punt. It is high. It takes a Bama roll. It's to the 45 of the balls, the 44, and that's where it is touched down at the 44-yard line. Best field position of the half for Tennessee. It wasn't the 80-yard punt I was hoping for, but it didn't get blocked. Yes. All right, here we go. Alabama's defense on the field, waving their hands in the air, trying to get the crowd into it even more. Dylan Sampson is the single setback. Keaton and Squirrel White are wide right. Jazz Nimrod is wide to the near side. Standing off the near hash mark. Quarterback keeper goes up the middle and is just tripped up by Deontay Lawson. And I mean barely tripped him up or else he'd still be running. Yeah, it was a nice call by Tennessee and Deontay Lawson doing all he could to bring Milton down. Now here's Milton, throws far side, and the ball is knocked away, incomplete by Alabama. They were looking for Keaton, and Trey Amos was there. Of course, Trey Amos jumped that route earlier when Milton fumbled the ball, and it was scooped and scored. Here he jumps it once again. He is not retreating much. Will Tennessee do some sort of double move trying to take advantage of that aggressive nature? 3.32 to go in the ball game. Alabama leads 34-20. to there's a second down and ten. Looking, throwing, near side, back shoulder. Squirrel White makes the nice grab as he steps out of bounds at the 40-yard line. We saw Squirrel catching darn near everything early in the ball game. They haven't used him much here of late. Now, here's Milton. He throws, and that one is caught on a slant across the middle by Ramel Ken uh, Keaton, and that's going to be enough to move the chains and another first down for the Volunteers. Not much of a pass rush right now. Tennessee offensive line doing a good job. Of course, you have to approach this game differently than some other teams. Three minutes to go. Alabama showing the way. Here's Milton taking off to run. He'll cut left and just does get tripped up. Not by much, but Caleb Downs just did get a hand on him. Well, second time on this drive, too. We've been a little too aggressive of trying to step up in there. Here now, 2.42 to go. Throwing it past everybody into the end zone on a diving attempt to catch it was Caleb Webb, a wide receiver for the balls. But that one is incomplete. So with 2.32 to go in the ball game. Tennessee will be looking at a second down and 10. Football on the 14 of Alabama. Dylan Sampson is the running back. Joe Milton III, his quarterback, comes back, says something to him. Play clock at three. Two, one, they jumped. They and jumped. they do not get it off. 
looked like somebody moved before the snap. Yeah, start, offense number 66. Five yards to the lead. And this will happen a lot. Offensive linemen are watching that play clock, too, and yeah. they're anticipating it. And sometimes if it's a half-second slow, they're going to go ahead and start backpedaling. That's a big penalty for Tennessee. Dane Davison, the guilty party. A former walk-on who is now a scholarship player. Here's a second and 15. Milton throws a slant. It is caught at the 10-yard line by Caleb Webb. Webb from Powder Springs, Georgia. We've not seen him at all until the last few plays here. We're down to 217 to go on the ball game. Alabama leading. Tennessee looking, looking, looking. Quarterback steps up. He's bottled up. He throws it to the near side. It's incomplete. Joe Milton was totally bottled up. Malachi Moore kept an eye on him. So did a host of others. Boy, he's very, very fortunate that he was able to get that ball away. He takes yeah. the sack right there. They're probably going to have to call a timeout. And now, fourth down. Let's fourth and here. five from the nine. Let's win it here, Eli. Let's put this baby away. False start. Here's a false start. Then make it a fourth down. And be a fourth down and ten now. They are 0 for 2 in fourth down conversions today, the Volunteers are. Alabama leads 34-20 after trailing early 13 to nothing. Last time we brought the house in this type of situation, very surprised. Alabama's going to sit back in coverage, force Joe Milton to throw the ball underneath, converge on it, and hopefully come up short. 2.07 to go. Big fourth down play. Milton stands in, backpedals. There's going to be some holding. Are they going to call it? No. But the ball is thrown away out of the back of the end zone, looking for squirrel white. And that is an incompletion. And Alabama is within shouting distance of a win. And a guy that we were concerned, would he play or would he not play? Malachi Moore has played outstanding today. He yes, was he in has. coverage, was going to force the ball to be dropped in. To just a perfect pass. It was not a little handsy out there, but these handkerchiefs have stayed in the pocket. To these referees all day long on both sides. They really have. There haven't been many penalties called all day today. And that's fine. You know, if you're not going to call it, then just don't call them for either team. Alabama has been called for one penalty all day. One penalty, Tennessee with eight. Well, they've been self inflicted on Tennessee's part, though. There's been no doubt about them. One first down here wins this ball game. You know they're going to be selling out. Getting downhill, trying to stop it, but the biggest thing is force them to use their timeouts. Quite a game today. Alabama now first and ten from their own 14-yard line. Milrow on the handoff. And Chase McClellan will go up the middle, and Tennessee will call timeouts. Tennessee. Boy, you know it's being discussed on the sideline right now. It's just ball security. Two hands on the ball, holding it high and tight. Because you know Tennessee's going to try to be ripping that thing away and hold Chase McClellan up. Now, that's, that works in your benefit a little bit, too, because they're not quick to get you down. A little bit of a second or two is going to run off. Very important to hold on to that football. Alabama off is next week. Next week is the idle week. Tennessee goes to Kentucky next weekend. The week after that, Bama is back home here against the LSU Tigers. Then they travel to Kentucky. They're home on the 18th of November, Bama is, against the Monks of Chattanooga. And then the trip to Auburn for the Iron Bowl on November the 25th. That's what's upcoming for Alabama. We certainly hope to have you here at the games or better yet, come to the game, bring a radio along and tune in to support our sponsors who have brought these broadcasts to you over the years. Phew. Don't breathe yet. Oh, I can breathe. I've seen this script before. I can breathe now.
Second down and seven. Alabama has Jace McClellan as the running back. He's lined up to the left rear of Milrow. Off the near hash mark, going left to right with a minute 55 to go in the game. Jermaine Burton in motion to the near side. Here's the give. McClellan fights his way to the left side. Tackle is made. Timeout, Tennessee. Second timeout of the half. George, Tennessee. I can start seeing a bit of a cloud now over the crowd here as folks are starting to light up their cigars. You always think back about uh, Ken Donahue and the late Jim Goostry who started that tradition as they lit up the cigars after a victory over the Volunteers. A tradition that has continued on through the ages. Isn't that something? You just look over there, you can just see a haze now beginning to form over the seating area. And Tom Stipe behind us. It's beautiful. Let's imagine there hadn't been a painting of this yet. Yeah. Here's a third down and four now for the Crimson Tide. Ball at the 20. McClellan is the running back, lined up to the far side of his quarterback. He'll get the handoff, and he'll fight to the 21-yard line. Third and final timeout of half for Tennessee. This will be a 30-second timeout. And you hear referee Ken Williamson intoning the fact that Josh Heupel has called his final timeout of the half. You know what I love about that? Obviously, you burned the three timeouts, but also you picked up seven yards when Tennessee knew you were going to run the ball. Exactly right. Let's pause 10 seconds right here for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Welcome back, everybody. Eli Gold, Tyler Watts, Christian Miller, Roger Hoover, Chris Stewart, our engineer producer, Tom Stipe, our spotter, Butch Owens, Ethan Carabin, making the pictures look as good as they possibly can on our in-booth furniture cam. I say as good as they can look because look what he has to work with. Not, not too much. But Royal Furniture is a proud sponsor of our in-booth camera. And now here's Burnip. Booms that one away. D. Williams makes the grab back at the 35. And he's taken down in the open field at the 37-yard line. A 47-yard punt and a handful of yards on the return. And a heck of a tackle by Jim Miller. He has a running back, but doing a heck of a job getting downfield, hustling, and making a nice open field tackle. Jam has not run the ball today. Bama has had Jace McClellan carry for 27 yards. Excuse me, 20, 115 yards on 27 carries. Roy Dell Williams has carried the ball six times. And Jalen Milrow himself nine times for a total of three yards. Jam has not run it. Now on a first and ten from the 35. Quarterback comes underneath. Catch is made, but nowhere for Jalen Wright to go as he circles out of the backfield. Makes the catch, but gets snowed under. If you play DB for Alabama, you're probably on the field right now. They're keeping everything yep. underneath. A minute 14 to go. Here's the quarterback, Milton. He winds his way towards midfield, picks up the first down. Quandarius Robinson there to make the tackle for the Crimson Tide. As we are down now to a minute nine remaining. Bama leads 34-20. Milton comes underneath. Catch made by Jalen Wright. It'll be short of the first down as one of the officials gets run over there. Probably the umpire in that position. He bounces up. Here now the quarterback yeah. under pressure. And he is going down all the way back at his own 40-yard line. Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell combined 
for the second sack of the day for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now Tennessee in no rush whatsoever. No, the bus isn't going to leave without him. <laughs> 21 seconds to go in the game. Here's the long toss through midfield area. It's taken and, and then scattered up the right sideline by the Volunteers. Out of bounds they go at the 10-yard line. Squirrel White. O only 10 seconds left, but you know that's one of those plays Coach Saban's going to be upset about. Yeah, yeah. Nine seconds, eight, the clock running, seven, six. Again, Alabama watching as Tennessee unloads underneath the defense. Catch is made, tackle is made. Alabama wins the third Saturday of October. Last year was an anomaly. Bama had won 15 in a row. Yeah, Tennessee won last year. But the tide is back to their winning ways here in 2023. Final of 34 to 20. And now I can take a sigh of relief. This was an awesome win for this Alabama football team. A completely different football club in the second half from what we saw. I mean, nothing was going right in the first half, but they turned around. Whatever was discussed, whatever focus these players had, it really showed as they dominated this second half. Christian Miller, you're normally in the locker room during halftime what was said that flipped the light switch to get this team the change the coaches just told these guys look we know we can play a lot better than what we're playing we just have to go out there and execute and get our mind right and that's exactly what they did the the, the switch was flipped and i'll be honest we looked a little flustered in that first half of the temple of the office but we definitely answered the bell in the second half and responded the right way we were scored we held them to be scoreless on defense it came over the crucial turnover with braswell's sack but look my only complaint is we got to do this minutes in the game. I love the way we played in the second half, but we can do that in the first half as well. We just have to come out swinging. Indeed so. Well said. It's, it's a glimpse of what this team is capable of. And they're proving it on the field of what they're capable of. And, and like Christian just said, they're awfully dangerous when they play at their potential. And of course, eight games in a row is not easy either without having an off week. Finally, there's an off week. And now you can rest up a little bit all the bumps and bruises that every player experiences. Get ice on it, rest it up, and it's also an opportunity to continue to build depth as younger guys are going to get more opportunities, more reps in practice. Folks, again, remember, coming up in just moments or so, our fifth quarter show is brought to you with Roger Hoover at the controls. He and a host of others bring you all the information as Nick Saban now is making laps of the field surrounded by his security detail. He's going down to see the students at the other end of the field, the opposite end from the locker room. He goes down. He's waving wildly to the fans, and now he does it again as he tries to midfield and heads to the locker room he just takes his right arm and extends it high in the air and he just loves it and again he talked about this on the talk show thursday night he said fans show up please make some noise he's still waving to the fans as he finally makes his way to the tunnel and heads to the locker room we'll talk more on the post game Tyler, enjoy the off weekend. We'll see you in two weeks from today. Hey, roll tide, Eli. Roll tide. Christian, roll tide to you, sir, and to this entire crew. Thank you so much for joining us. Now stay tuned. The Regions Bank Fifth Quarter Show is next right here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Picture yourself here. This mental getaway brought to you by VisitPensacola.com. When you live in SEC country, you feel it everywhere you go. The traditions and rivalries surround you. As much as you celebrate the game, Regions celebrates your financial wins even more. And like SEC fans, we'll never quit. Because in an SEC world, we're the SEC Bank. Regents, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC. During the pandemic, we put a lot on hold. One of the things missed may have been keeping up with our regularly scheduled vaccinations. Hi, I'm Dallas Turner. And I'm Rodell Williams. We're here to remind everyone across the state to protect the entire BAM community by staying up to date with all recommended vaccinations. Flu season is coming, and COVID-19 continues to affect our community. So don't wait. 
vaccinate. Visit alabamapublichealth.gov backslash IMM to learn more about how you can stay safe and up to date on vaccinations for you and your children. Stay safe and roll time. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of Alabama Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Picture yourself here. White sugar sand beach, clear blue-green water. This is Pensacola. It's the way to beach. Experience what's waiting at visitpensacola.com. On the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield, this is the Regions Fifth Quarter Show. Regions, the official bank of the SEC. Alabama football is also brought to you by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon, the unbeatable combination for termite protection. Toyota, visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places and buy. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. The last 10 meetings between Alabama and Tennessee here in Tuscaloosa have ended with fans in Crimson smoking a cigar. Today's final score from Brian Denny Stadium, the Alabama Crimson Tide 34 and the Tennessee Volunteers 20. Glad to welcome you to the region's fifth quarter show. Show your Tide pride and get a win for your wallet with the University of Alabama region's Visa debit card and prepaid region's now card. Order now at regions.com slash go. Bama, Roger Hoover joined by Tyler Watts. Tyler, it was not looking great at halftime. Alabama trailing 20 to 7, but then the uh, switch was flipped in the second half. Alabama outscoring the Volunteers 27 to nothing. Yeah, we were completely flustered. That's probably the best word. Nothing was in rhythm offensively, defensively. The pace of play was really an adjustment that we weren't getting a hold of. Gave up too many big plays, too much cushion. The running game was going for Tennessee. Whatever was discussed, whatever the mindset was of this team in the second half, though, it completely flipped. And it really all started here. Offensively, we struggled. Two, two turnovers, ten points off those turnovers, and then to come out and score on two plays in the second half. Now, all of a sudden, for the first time in, in over an hour, the fans were back into the game. And then you force a three and out. And then you take the next possession and you move the ball down the field again. All of a sudden, the script flipped. We were running the football control the line of scrimmage, and they could not establish anything on the ground. They couldn't get in rhythm. That was an outstanding performance by this defensive unit, shutting down Tennessee in the second half. It really was remarkable. Alabama picking up a 34-20 to win over Tennessee. That's the final score as the Crimson Tide with this victory, improving to 7-1 and overall, now a perfect 5 and in the SEC with the loss Tennessee now 5 and 2 and 2 and 2 in SEC play. We're just getting started with the region's fifth quarter show after Alabama wins on the third Saturday in October. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Tackle your to-do list this season and find the right Aetna Medicare plan for you in your home state of Alabama. With Aetna Medicare Advantage plans, you can get a $0 monthly plan premium with hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage. Plans also include dental, vision, and an over-the-counter benefit. Be the star quarterback of your health. Call us for a personalized coverage review now. 1-833-771-7542. TTY-711. Aetna Medicare is an HMO PPL plan with a Medicare contract. First and contracts with state Medicaid programs. Enrollment under plan depends on contract renewal. Plan features and availability may vary by service area. Wherever you are around the world, experience the power of the University of Alabama online. A tradition of excellence. Choose from more than 90 degree and certificate programs. Built upon decades of experience in distance learning. Learn from leaders. Advance your career with the University of Alabama online. Where legends log in. Visit online.ua.edu. PNC Bank is proud to serve and celebrate the places we call home. And to share that pride, we're helping you put your passion front and center with the Crimson Tide PNC Bank Visa Debit Card. We're proud to support the Crimson Tide PNC Bank. See how we can make a difference for you at PNC.com. Visa is a registered trademark of the Visa International Service Association and used under license. Copyright 2022. The PNC Financial Services Group Incorporated. All rights reserved. PNC Bank National Association Member FDIC. Connecta Sausage is an Alabama tradition and a fan favorite. 
made fresh in evergreen Alabama since 1947, Kaneka Sausage is the best tasting hickory smoked sausage you'll ever put in your mouth. Always great for breakfast, Kaneka Sausage is now a tailgate grilling favorite. Pick up some today where you buy groceries. Kaneka Sausage, the official smoked sausage of the Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide football is brought to you by Aetna, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide Sports Network. This is Alabama Crimson Tide football from Learfield. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTechStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Alabama 34 and Tennessee 20. Tide fans, be sure to join Corey Reamer and I on Monday night, 6 p.m. for Crimson Tide Rewind, presented by the Alabama Department of Public Health on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, live from Baumhauer's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills. Legendary fun, legendary food, Baumhauer's Victory Grill. We'll hear from Coach Saban coming up, but right now the players have made their way from the Crimson Tide locker room, and they've hustled all the way to the south end to meet with the Alabama students and have a victory lap with cigars in hand. Tyler Watts, always a great sight. It is, and, and this is something typically you don't see, but but I love it. I, I love to see enthusiasm by the players because sometimes we think they're too stale and it's just all about this or all about that. No, it, they're, they're still 18 to 20 <laughs> years old, man, and, and this is beautiful to witness them coming out and enjoying this with the student body. Well, how about Coach Saban as well, taking that victory lap going down to the students as well? We don't always see that from him. No, we don't, and Eli mentioned it, what he had mentioned Thursday night of wanting the crowd to be involved. Well, for the first half, they didn't have an opportunity. They tried, but the football team wouldn't allow them to become a part of this game and have an impact until that second half started. The offense drove the length of the field. Then immediately, this crowd responded and, and was a definite impact on the outcome of this football game. Yeah, the celebration that really very few students have left, especially in the first few rows of the south end zone. Celebrating with Crimson Tide players, uh, again, a great sight on this victorious third Saturday in October. The year is 2023. Tennessee's last win here was back in 2003. Now 10 straight meetings at Bryant-Denny Stadium, Alabama victorious against Tennessee. We'll continue with more. Coach Saban will be joining us shortly with his post-game press conference again, powered by Tri Green Equipment after Alabama tops Tennessee 34 to 20. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Producing championship quality lumber is not an easy process, but at Everwood Preserving, it's our only process. Wood treated right. Everwood offers top-notch pressure treated wood for decks, outdoor structure.